We're on the right one there. Get your scene up. All set, huh? Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, all you, dude. You're in the pilot's uh, pilot's chair here. All right, folks. How many people? We got some people trickling in here, huh? Yeah, I got five uh five active viewers. I'm uh, just working up his fees. Yeah, W. Soren just showed it. Uh, showed up, dropping. <laughs> Wow, that was that was prolific. Wow, um, yeah, W. Soren showing up, dropping five gift subs off in chat there. Um, My man, Soren, <laughs> the mad lad striking again. Haywo's with us. Brent up in here. Carter up in here. So got a little bit of a who's who of chat gang going on. This is going to be real fun. So here's a quick introduction, everybody. I thought I had more time. Available Abby this week. To get, to, get is back. Uh, to get everything all prepped out and put into a beautiful PowerPoint. And then the proverbial grumpers hit the fan. Uh, because I'm a school teacher, I haven't really been teaching. And this week, everything just ramped up parabolically along with the virus. We're essentially starting school all online, everything from scratch. That ended up being like a 40 hour process over three days with a lot of people. Never have I worked under such immense pressure so quickly, so hard. Never have I been more grateful for my team at work, and I'm super ready to start distance learning on Monday. That was my week. It was ridiculous. So we got the first, I didn't get as many pictures for us to analyze, but we're just going to work with it. Uh, we got we got all the elements. We're going to learn our principles. And then we'll just talk about techniques a little bit. But basically, how this is going to work is Mephisto is going to be my student. And we're going to learn the artist language, how to apply analysis skills, and why that's important. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to rock, Chicago? I yeah. Mean, so um, Hypothetically, where we share. would be. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to do my screen share, and then we'll get into this point. We'll do some analysis. We're going to run through all the elements in this PowerPoint, then we're gonna have to go to another uh, document I have with a bunch of pictures in it to get into principles. So screen share on. Y'all tell me if this does not look right. So are we, are you all seeing the artist? Uh, they should be able to see the PowerPoint now. Okay. Applying elements, principles, and techniques. Practiced way of seeing. What is practiced way of seeing me? Anytime you have a job, Anytime you have a, a, a sport you do, any kind of competition, you have to practice at it. Artists need to be practiced at seeing things. You know, everybody really sees things, no matter what your profession or your hobby is. You're looking at things and interpreting those things, and you have a way of seeing that allows you to take that information in and then do something awesome with it. You play chess, you have a way of seeing uh, both tactics and strategy at the same time. You're seeing patterns. Artists see patterns too. You play basketball, you have a way of seeing where there's openings for you to get value in your game. And it's thinking about those and practicing seeing, not just like sitting and when it's time to do some painting, then turning on your eyes and trying to see. It's practicing all the time. That's going to make you better at doing art. So my name's Andrew. If you don't know me, I teach first through third graders. I'm a Montessori teacher. I love art all kinds of art, calligraphy, painting. I used to be a filmmaker. That's what I got my bachelor's in. This series is about elements, principles, and techniques. This is going to give you a language. If you get a thorough understanding of these areas, you're going to be an active consumer of art. You're going to be an active creator of art. You're going to have better ideas as you're looking and making your own art. You're going to improve and work using these concepts and this language to train your eyes. Elements and principles and techniques. Elements are your ingredients, the building blocks. They're like the tactics. Principles are the rules or the recipes, how you put those elements together, how you organize all those elements, how you organize your ingredients to make your final dish. Technique is how you do that with your hands. The elements are line, shape, form, color, texture, space, and value, and kind of perspective. We're going to ignore our perspective today because that's primarily a 2D technique. We'll talk about it a little bit. Principles are emphasis, contrast, balance, rhythm, movement, pattern, and harmony. 
techniques. We're not going to talk about that today. That's stuff you need to figure out. Through looking at art, you might figure out how to get that with a technique. So an element of a chess game might be a tactical idea, like win a piece. Principle might be a strategic idea, like trade down once you have a piece advantage. Techniques might be something like I use a pin or a fork. Same thing can apply to your strategic thinking in terms of playing the game of Age of Sigmar, which I know most of our viewers, that's what you're doing. We're going to apply the same way of thinking. You can think about anything you do, anything you practice in life, this exact same way in these three levels, elements, principles, techniques. So if you want to paint armies, this guide is for you. You can use your understanding of elements and principles to be a faster painter, because then you don't have to sit around thinking of ideas. You're just go, 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 because you're getting ideas as you're going. You're using kind of shortcuts. If you use artist language, you're going to strengthen your visualization, imagining what's going to happen as you are painting a given model, how you can reach your end goal faster through practicing your eye and your hand together. You're going to paint faster and better. Painting for display? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody who paints thinks about these ideas. So here's a nice little display piece in which you're, we're going to be able to analyze once we're done with this video. You can identify things in a piece of art, like here's the Welks, and you might look at this and you're a practice viewer with an artist's language is going to be able to see the little striations in the lines and say, and say, oh, that's line. They use line and texture to get this feeling. Uh, if you want your eye to be strong, you have to practice. It's not just about watching videos. It's about looking at things for extended periods of time and seeing how those elements and principles are combining to get to the emotionality of the piece or the story of the piece. So this guide is going to give you the ability to do that. You can appreciate art. If you don't have these foundational concepts, you're going to harm yourself. So that's why we're trying to get a way to talk about painting and specifically with mini painting here. The practice looking, that's what we're doing. So what you get from the course, um, we start with elements. So Matt, if you're my student today, yes, we're going to learn about elements of art. I know you've been painting for a while, and I know you are practice looking at things, and you get excited when things look cool. So we're going to talk about Guilty. how we can talk about things today. <clears throat> looking, we're going to start with the line, shape, form, space, texture, value, color, and a little bit of perspective. And by the end of this, hopefully give you some vocabulary and some ideas so when you are looking at art, you can take those ideas and maybe practice them yourself to make your pieces look better and better. Are you ready to go? Are, am I ready? I, uh, Are you ready? I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. Are we ready, chat gang? Are we ready to learn some yeah. shit? Now, I can't see chat questions. So you have questions, you write them, you have answers to the questions I'm asking you. Practice way of seeing so you can get involved in the chat. And Meth will tell me any um, analysis ideas or anything you have there. Yeah, it's uh, it's really handy handy for me, by the way. If your question is to uh, either Andrew or you know the stream to like do do an at Meff or Mister Meff, like it'll highlight it in chat. That way, it really jumps out for me, so I can I can help him out. Um, All right, so let's talk about line. A line is just a mark. It's drawn with any kind of moving tool, pencil, brush, pen. Blood. You can make lines out of many different things. <laughs> So it's a dot moving through an area. You can also call a dot a line, like technically the smallest line possible. Line is the most basic element of all design, and it has unlimited forms. It's the most important element of an artwork. And if you are practiced at looking at lines, you will see how painting is easy because it's all just tiny lines. That's all it is. Now, depending what you do with those lines, you get different effects. Lines define objects. Lines define texture. Lines can be straight, wavy, thick, thin, broken, curved, dark, light, vertical, horizontal, parallel, oblique, whatever. If you have two colors that come close together, that creates a line in between the middle of them. So from lines, you can divide uh, contour, shading, shape, form, and if you're doing 2D art, perspective. So lines also suggest movement. If you point all your lines in the same direction, and we'll get to that when we Principles. It might move the viewer's eye to a spot where you want them to, to evoke the emotionality of the scene you're making. They can communicate feelings. They can appear active or static. They can create patterns. So now I'm going to give you some questions, and we're going to look 
at some pieces of art that I specifically chosen to look at line. Um, line. Bent spawn, shopping carts. Simple, simple, simple. Meth, how many different kinds of lines are here? Uh, probably a bunch. I mean, I've got some diagonal lines. I've got some horizontal. Mm -hmm. Vertical, I've got the dots. You know, I've got some zigzagging going on. A lot of thin lines. Uh, Do they outline any shapes? Not really. They're just, they, they are themselves making the shape, right? Yeah, they make the shape. Yeah. Um, do they create movement or are they static here? They feel a lot more static. Yeah. They, they're not like, these, these carts aren't going anywhere. They're just like smushed. Any yeah. lines that show dimension in this piece? Not, well, kind of on the far right and then the middle there. There's a, there's a couple that like try to give me a dimension, but I think it comes off really flat. Via overlapping, yeah, a little bit of dimension. A little bit of dimension, but yeah. Any feelings or sentiments that you get from the lines? Uh, it's really messing with my anxiety. <laughs> like, um, but no, no real feeling. They're just like, uh, you know, my imagination is taking over for them because there's not a lot here to be desired. Yeah, it seems I, I get like potential energy. Mm -hmm. I think just sitting here waiting for something to move. So just with a, some simple lines, this is pretty much the, the simplest piece that you could ever look at. And these are very simple questions. Mm -hmm. But if you train yourself to ask these questions, those same set of questions that I just asked, you will be able to make your art better by getting ideas for what to do with your lines. If you're just going around doing lines, and it's like playing a game of Sigmar without a plan. You're just moving your pieces for no reason. Mm -hmm. With your painting, if you're thinking, how can I get my lines to do something, then you're going to have better painting. Yeah, see that, that yeah, so that, that previous piece looked like people were like just in a rush with COVID to just throw their carts and they, they didn't yeah. put them together. <laughs> um, sorry. No, no. Um, what, could you reset real quick what those basic questions were? Well, let's do them again. Let's oh. get to uh, how okay. many lines are here. Okay. This piece. How many lines? How many, or how many different kinds of lines? Um, I mean, this one predominantly is using a lot of, of curved or squiggly lines. Uh, we've got mm -hmm. a couple of straight ones uh, with like the what looks like the snowflake thing in the top middle. Uh, we got like a cool little spiral, um, you know, some V shapes um, or some V lines forming some shapes. Uh, Any movement in this piece? This one's got a lot more movement than the cart one. Yeah. So how are the lines making that movement happen? Which particular lines are we looking at? I, I think a lot of the because the cir the sort of circular composition the the squiggly lines and the circular lines kind of draw my eye circular around this uh, around this painting trying to look for the focal point so mm -hmm. like I end up on the the color is what draws my eye the most over the lines because the lines are very uh, chaotic chaotic yeah we see this kind of wackiness between interplay of straight lines and and we'll talk more about that when we get to shape. Um, lines here, any lines that uh, show dimension? Dimension on either of these? Either of these. Uh, you see a little bit more on the uh, on the swan than on the uh, sort of abstract piece on the right. Yeah, again, we get that overlap for that perspective. Yeah. yeah but any that's... lines um, outlining shapes here? What's... So, like, the lines outlining shape, we see a lot more on the, the left with the swan picture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, those are very defined lines, a very flowing, curved. Um, even the where, where they are kind of supposed to be straight in the feathers, those are very much, you know, those those are, um, you know, they're not stagnant. They're, they're, they're all differing shape sizes, and they even squiggle differently. The one on the right draws its shape by the... Uh, by the con by where the two lines meet or the rather the dots of color with the white and the and the orange that's how i get the shape it's not like a hard line that's giving me that shape for that very cool yeah you've got that that splotchy orange paint technique with that splotchy white paint technique and a kind of faded line is almost created to outline maybe a face yeah yeah that's so it's it's more of the where the the dotting or the splotching that's where we kind of get a bit of a line but the most pre predominant obvious one is this almost like this uh, this railroad <laughs> that just starts at the top of the piece uh, squiggles and loops down kind of through the center and it just kind of this gives us our 
forehead wrinkles, our nose, our mouth, even like sort of a bit of a double chin before it works its way down to a little like curly Q tail. Yeah, I really like the curly cool tail kind of evokes, and this is something you too um, in any element, the motif of a calligraphy down there at the bottom. Mm. Yeah. Any lines here you enjoy? Um, there's, uh, I think the coolest lines in this one are actually, I mean, this is me personally, but I like where the, the bleed, you can see the bleeding in the watercolor. That's my favorite uh, line. Like, and that one's the least intentional line. <laughs> um, I like that. I think that that's very striking. Uh, and in stark contrast to how very, like, contained the rest of this is. Like, it, it's very, like, uh, contained, but it reminds me of a, you know, this, 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 they're, they're using the color a lot. They're leaning on the color here to, I think, fill in the picture. If this was just black and white, um, it, you're going to have a lot to be desired, but with the color, uh, lines that are being divided and, and, and drawn, you actually almost get this, you know, sunrise, sunset over the ocean type, type, type thing going on. Oh, yes. Very cool. You got it, Giorgio O'Keefe. That very, very uh, surreal, very uh, mm. expressive way of showing the sunset mm -hmm. by breaking it down to its simplest forms of just some thick lines of color. Lines here, too, you can see their legs one direction. So this is probably intentional by the artist, except for this one guy in the middle. So this kind of, uh, this one... Um, bird you your eye might get drawn to that right away you've got this really nice uh composition made drawing emphasis there in contrast depending on the directionality of the lines and we're going to talk about uh principles how lines can cause contrast and emphasis mm -hmm. so that piece already what about this piece by ramirez on the left i i really love this i mean this is uh this the, the lines are being used really well here to make the viewer feel small. <laughs> like, like the scope uh, of this seems very big. I'm looking at it just on a painting and I can already feel my body kind of shrinking inward because we have essentially this train here. But these grand looping lines that that are like even in, in small places, they're these big loops of line. Uh, you know, the smallest ones are on the archway to just kind of give that contrast in... in uh, mm -hmm you know, sort of vertical uh, composition to a horizontal composition. Uh, yeah, so you're seeing dimension here by just making those lines get closer together as they come down to the bottom of that tunnel there. And you can do this in your painting too, by making your lines get closer together to draw the eye. Yeah, this one's this one's really cool. Like, um... And then on the right here, we have this beautiful woodcut, which is... There aren't too many kinds of lines here. They're mostly straight and they're thick, thin. And so you see the what's created here is there are lines and there are not lines, and that can and that really brings out uh, dimension in the piece. Well, there's look a... at the nose and look at the hair to the side, left side and right side. So you get like really dynamic, effective lighting that is created only with lines. Right. There's no there's no value here. It's black and white. There's no, there's no color value. All it's done is lines. It's either white or not white. So you, you can use hashing like this in your miniature painting too. Mm -hmm. If you practice looking at ways uh, that people are using to do, you will be able to make your mini painting better. So here we have shape. All right. Shapes are flat. So primarily we'll, this is kind of, a, we'll go a little faster, but it's important to think about shapes. You are going to think about four when you're doing painting, uh, but it's just an area enclosed by a boundary. They have two dimensions, their length and width. We make shapes out of line and we make shapes out of color. Most artists will say, if you can draw all the shapes, you can draw anything. It's mm -hmm. pretty much just where are you putting them? Mm -hmm. I love these thick ladies we've got going on here. So. Yeah. So here, this, I like this piece because it shows the difference between, uh, geometric shapes and organic shapes so point out some of those differences what's geometric here what's organic uh tables more more on your geometric side um the rugs are a little bit more geometric um and then the the ladies uh the babes here are 
a little bit more uh, abstract. Yeah, very cool. Uh, it kind of makes uh, them really stand out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. That's called contrast. That's the most important principle we're going to learn about. Mm -hmm. What's the most dominant shape here? Where's your eye go? Uh, to the lady on the right with her coffee. Yeah. Why do you think your eye's going there? Uh, color. The... Color and color. composition. She's a different color, but also she's vertical, and the rest of the images are pulled horizontal. That's an important question to ask. Where does your eye go? Why does your eye go there? You can think of it in terms of shape here, color here, line, all of these. Uh, so do you see any dimension here in the shapes? Yeah. Um, the, the table, I think, is the biggest one that's got dimension. Um, yeah. So. I see a sort of dimension created through value here with that darkness around the edges of the organic shapes of the ladies. Mm-hmm that makes them kind of seem more three-dimensional. Duh! Ooh, simplest. <laughs> simplest. Mondrian. Oh, man. <laughs> what kinds of shapes are here? How are they working? You see uh, on the left. That's uh, Mondrian, the dude, geometric, organic mixture. Yeah, yeah. So this is very much geometric, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just all boxes. Um, this is a picture of boxes. Uh, this is the sort of I think thing. This, this is called like Broadway Boogie or Downtown Shuffle or something. Ooh. Yeah. Inspired by New York City. Mm. Yeah. Um, I, uh, this implied is... shapes here. Well, the implied shapes would be this the white space, right? Yes. The, so we have these these cubes, uh, these cubes and boxes and rectangles that are formed by sort of the lack of of using using color in there. So. Yeah, you had. What were you about to say about the piece? Uh, I do not want. <laughs> I don't like this piece. Anxiety for you? Yeah, I mean, I know it's a, it's a more of a me thing than a than others thing, but yellow as a color is always is like I find agitating, uh, mm. and it's like uh, assaulting me right now. <laughs> That might it's be the kind of, for me. It's kind of cozy, like it's this incomprehensible mess, like jazz music. Really? Yeah. No, I, I'm like I am being assaulted. I feel like I've got like box cars driving at me <laughs> right now. With oh, the... cool, cool. Yeah, like uh, you know, you've got the the red and the the red shapes, and like, and then there's just all this flashes of yellow. It's like I'm standing in headlights. It's crazy. All right, so let's practice identifying some shapes in uh, the left piece. Piggies. Porco. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the shapes here? What are they? Um, I, I just to highlight some comments in, in chat here. Um, you know, Heywo says, Oh, it's the street from above. Uh, Frank says, Feels like home to me. Rocco said, On the left, feels so busy. Uh, yeah, the, the yellow is doing the number on him, too. He says, I get jazz music, but more of like a swing type thing. I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, really up temple there. Yeah, Brent is like is, is like this is a psych card for sure. You know, like this is something that you'd you'd hold up in an office, almost like a you know the ink splotch tests, um, the Rorschach tests, and uh, and just record the person's response. <laughs> and yeah. like, uh, so I like that 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 chats chats all having their own reactions to these pieces too. And that's why it's important. And too often we don't sit with a piece for long enough, and that's where at the yeah. Our devices are designed to make us consume as much as possible, to get our attention as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. You can miss out on how much one little thing can give you. I know we're going to rush through today because this is a, a learning activity, but I encourage you to take any of these pieces, and at the end we'll show how we can use all this language we're learning to identify uh, these elements and principles in miniature art. Let's take a look at the uh, piggies. Uh, shapes, what do you see there? Um, you, a lot of uh, actually... This one's really cool if you're looking at just the shapes because you're seeing a lot of sort of curved. There's not like a uh, a use of like regular shape apart from maybe like the rectangles a couple times, but like a lot of the shapes are being smashed together. And it's really mm -hmm. cool because you'll have like half of it will be a circle and then it ends on being a square to the one side. And and it's it's creating a cool like harmony throughout yeah, the whole nice thing. Yeah, there's harmony between 
the organic and the geometric yeah, and the geometric like, shapes. Yeah, they almost look like they're trying to break free from the painting or something. Yeah, I dig this. I, I would love to like this would be a really cool if it were stained glass. You know, the medium like because you just be like light would mess around with it a lot. So this is a little less abstract here. We've got this romantic art, and this is, might be something you'd see in a miniature. So let's see how shape is working here in this. Uh, two-dimensional piece of art well the shapes are being used to draw your eye to the top right now i know we naturally tend to like start looking top right at things as a like human we usually scan a certain way um but it's really doing that to you and then you have these these solitary shapes that like go against it and it's really cool so for instance um the longer i look at this one you know my first my first reaction was to like have my eye drawn essentially from the bottom left where it's brightest and the shapes are most the most open up towards the right where they the shapes get a lot more closed and and tighter to this person holding up this like uh, you know this flag or garment or whatever um but the more i look at it the more i actually find myself fixated on the uh the gentleman sitting and looking away from all the action and that shape mm -hmm. is leaning away from everything so it's like i keep like my eye keeps wanting to go top right but then i just like come back to this to this person do you see any triangles uh in the sail uh the boat itself um i think the piece itself has a rough triangle like a yeah you know the it, you know our hard line is is gradually a uh, check and can see my can see my cursor so so our, we have this the top of the triangle here the slope back here and then the, it's sort of right here this is a triangle um here uh, a uh, what is it? I, I I see isosceles the, triangle right i see four triangles here but i see i that's... can see a triangle created by the mast and the two ropes. within that i see a tiny triangle of the four people huddled mm. in the background then i see a triangle it's kind of like a pile of bodies with the the man sitting out there yeah yeah and then there's a triangle created with the right. guy looking away from the action with the red cloak yeah. It's just like a pile of triangle bodies. And looking for triangles in composition is something you should always be looking for. Not just not just in terms of line or shape or texture, but with color. And you do this on your models too. Triangles help connect and make people... There's a reason that most chords are three notes. People like triangles. So if you put... Your dude has... Uh, your model has wrist bracers and they're both red you better hope he's got some of that same red in the bottom of the base or on his loincloth or up on his helmet well three is the num yeah. it, the the rule of threes is also in, it's in comedy it's in writing um mm -hmm. we're just like our brains i don't know why if it's some, some learned behavior but we're we love the number three as humans <laughs> like this the triangles so I, I can't, the more you, you mentioned the triangles, the more I saw them everywhere. Like, even, like, the bottom jut of the raft, the single, singular characters became triangles. Like, it was... It's yeah, it's cool. the first thing to look at. Like, in the, in the, if, in between the legs are starting... Like your, your model you're painting isn't working, then maybe look and see if there's a triangle missing. And make that triangle with the color, with the texture, mm -hmm. um, form. This is something that... If you're a sculptor of minis, you're going to need a little more. But it's important to be able to look at it, too, to know how best to get the most out of your model. So forms are the three-dimensional figures that uh, that are volume. Mm -hmm. So they're volume and mass. Cubes, spheres, cylinders, all geometric solids, ellipsoids, ovoids, whatever. They're all forms. Mm -hmm. You need to know how these are supposed to be shaded when light hits them spots you need to know that the best way to do that is to draw is to get a form put a light on it from a different angle and practice shading it you need to be able to do this if any minis a lot of times if you paint like the gw way paint one color shade it then paint it all back up except for like the darkest recesses you're not doing what light is naturally doing if you're looking at forms and just painting up the forms the way the light would hit them, then your piece is going to look more natural. Hmm. So let's take a look at this. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. What kinds of forms are here in this little man? Now, when you say form, you mean the three-dimensional shapes. Three-dimensional form. Solids. Okay. So 
we got the man himself, right? The barrel, the pl- the plank he's standing upon. This mess of bodies feels like, you know, separate forms coming together. The axe, uh, whatever the fuck he's holding in his hand, <laughs> his uh, his his little like manacle. Uh, that's what makes him invincible. Mm. You see any cylinders? Uh, the barrel, right? Uh, the heft of the 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 bulk, the the centerpiece of the axe there is is very cylindrical. Um, technically, his body is a cylinder. Right? There you go. You got it. The most important thing: miniature painting. Every mini is a cylinder. Every single one. And when you light a cylinder, it's always a straight on as brightest part will be. You want to draw the eye to that. You want the face and the front to be the brightest. And then you think about spheres and ellipsoids on his muscle and on his hand. Hand kind of looks like a cube or a prism almost. You got this chunk of hair, which is made out of smaller little things. Do these feelings, is there a suggestion of movement in the way that these forms, where does your eye go? Um, I mean, I'm drawn immediately to the center of the model, but then I see that he's looking up at something and then my eye goes up where he's looking. Right, exactly. So if you look at your model and you feel like, where are these forms telling you towards, Mm -hmm. you make that part brighter or you draw the eye there with lines or you draw the eye there with color. Oh uh-huh. yeah! <laughs> I see we've got uh, a so, picture. We've got a picture of Catacross here on the left. Yep, one of these. <laughs> uh, what kind of forms do you see here on the left? Uh, cylinders. <laughs> yeah. Um, cylinder. uh, his girth is it's a full cylinder. Full of cylinders, all yeah. dressing as high. Yeah. You've got these cylinders in the legs. Mm-hmm. You've got cylinders in the arms. Mm-hmm. And then you've got the torso. The whole thing is like a cylinder. And then head is like a cube. And then on the right, we've got some more abstract kind of forms. All right. Oh wow. Okay. This is a this is dramatic. Oh yeah. Space. Space is emptiness between, around, above, below, within. What is not having anything going on in it? So space can make a two-dimensional piece appear three-dimensional by giving depth, kind of with perspective. But you can also think about this in terms of when you're setting your army up for display, or if you've got a base with a bunch of stuff going on. Um, There's positive space and negative space, which is, uh, so the, the positive space is the space that's created by an image or a part of the image, and the negative space is where the, the space around it, where nothing is going on. So do we count this field that she's in as negative space, even though there's a lot of line work uh, to get the, the field to have, like, this texture? Yeah, I would call it negative space. Otherwise, yeah. you could think of, I mean, if you back up a little more, then maybe the sky is... Yeah, th- I mean, that's where you'd zoom out a little bit more and the sky would be, like, the supreme negative space. But, like, the sky... I mean, Chat Gang seems to love this one, too. Yeah, this is a beautiful piece. He, he uh, says... Uh, uh, Frank says, I know we're looking at art here, but man, does the title of this piece shape the narrative so much. It's true, yeah. What is the title of this one? Um, oh God, what is it? Uh, Frank did worked in a museum for a while there. Um, art this museum. is... Uh, Young girl in, I can't remember the name. I know this girl Christ, has uh, Christina's World. Is that yes? What it is? Christina's yes. World. Yeah. Christine's World. Yeah, uh, Chat this Gang girl seems to love. Doesn't this have one. the use of her legs. Hmm. So, like, it, it. If you look at her, she's on the ground. She's lying to the ground, and then it's kind of like if you if you if you re- recognize just a moment, you're like, well, the perspective here is kind of weird. like the horizon line is a bit too high. Yeah. Which if she's lower down to the ground while she's sitting here, uh-huh. it definitely puts you in her world. Well, there's a there's a heft to this to this one. I and they actually have. So I know we're we're on space now, but that line in the along the horizon is very dramatic because one, it's it's pitched, you know, uh, it's yes. up up in that top right. But like that line is almost created from the contrast between the sky and the grass. 
and it becomes yep. this very pronounced almost solid boundary and i feel like the whole like you can actually feel like the weight of that sky pushing down on the ground because of how how they've used the space like it's it's really dramatic the the fact that there's like these buildings here are good details but like a lot of the impact of for this art here for me is coming from that that the drama between between the space and then the 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 figure and then the the buildings are just adding in context yes so um, I'm a bit confused with the light grass versus dark grass. Is it to show a form of depth or size somehow like the long grass versus the field? I think that's what's going on here. You have like the un untrimmed sort of like field that she's in. Then you have more like the the lot grass. Like the yard versus the field. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what Chat Gang seems to have figured it out. So. Okay, so what kind of space do you see here? This is by Ben Comet. This is really cool. Um, I so this one's pretty cool because like it's it's actually kind of busy, right? I I gotta get better with my microphone here, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not used to looking at that screen while I talk, so my microphone position is off a little bit. Um, what's going on here is is so this is really cool because he's got that that negative space where it's just the texture paint before we get into the business, and I love that because you have this like this like reprieve and then it's just all business um i like that you know like you've got the drop pod there little dude with its uh like canine or whatever um but like the space here in front of the lift i think is pretty significant for making this this piece work um, yeah you've got that nice almost two-thirds yeah triangle. Yeah, a triangle again? yeah, we've got a triangle again. So we got two. We've actually got two triangles butting up against each other. We've got the sort of light tan, empty triangle, and then we've got the clutter triangle here. And yeah, there. so a triangle's a way to use space in terms of like the composition of. Space. Yeah. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> Super cool. Uh, this is awesome. <laughs> um. I know everyone knows my reaction was for the right picture and not the left picture. <laughs> I love the left, the left piece. Um, I think that's a really it shows space as a as an almost mathematical concept mm. of weight. It this one, I mean, my brain is immediately being informed by all of my subjective uh, realities. So like, I'm just like looking at this, like, okay, Mario time. Like, I'm I'm wondering how I'm going to platform oh, through okay. this. So yeah. like. But, like, what's cool about it is you can actually see these lines being drawn here by the space again. Um, so, like, you can actually... There's no difference in color between this first sort of cell straight up and down and this cell next to it, right? It's all the same colors, but this this space is creating, like, an optical illusion of a line that you can almost see the lines between each uh, sort of vertical... Uh, rectangle you can actually see these lines begin to form in the, as you stare at the space of this piece that's the coolest thing about this one i think beyond the mario yeah but i i don't know if that's what you're getting at and then the other one i liked because it's a bunch of cute skulls <laughs> yeah. they're so adorable <laughs> yeah so this is a piece where there's almost no negative space <laughs> right that's there's a couple breaks, but then it's very, so like the more I stare at this, the more claustrophobic it begins to feel. But I, I suspect that that is the artist's intent because these are very, uh, these are not photorealistic skulls that are being drawn here. They are, these are cute with wacky colors, yada, yada, yada. But because they're so congested and there's not a lot of negative space, you, you can start to feel compressed. And I think that's pretty cool. Like cute death. Okay, so now we're getting into the second most important element for miniature painting, and that's texture. Let's that's see. a surface quality of something, or how it how it feels, or how it would looks like it would feel if you touched it. So this helps bring your painting to life. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing this, you're you're cheating yourself. And too often, people would just paint everything the same way. You paint your shadows and then you paint your highlights. If you uh, get good at looking at texture and train your eye to look at the techniques that let you make texture, 
you're going to add a lot to your mini painting. Mm. Artists employ tons of different techniques. We're going to look at some of those. Now we're going to get into a lot more minis because it is so important. So first we have this really abstract piece on the left. What's the Van Gogh, isn't it? Um, no, this no. is, um, I can't remember the artist's name. This is called Self-Portrait of a Degenerate Artist. This one's in, I swear I've seen this one in reality. Is this one in the in the mat or a... Uh... Not sure. It's by a Russian artist, and he was called a degenerate by the newspapers. Huh. I, I showed this to one of my students, and maybe, I was maybe. Like, why do you think they called it that? And he was like, well, he could have just painted all smooth, but he <laughs> didn't like that. And I was like, oh my god, you just got it. Like, yeah. You just understood what art is capable of doing, that it's capable of culture and morality. I'm so thrilled right now. Yeah, this, this is a really cool piece, though. Um, it's a so this would be a palette knife painting, um, the, yep. and uh, these are a lot of fun to do when I was still uh, uh, wanting to to have a career in art. These are really freaking fun uh, because it's just it's a very controlled chaos to get this to work, and this guy's got even more like layers and colors than I have ever used in a single palette knife. Uh, yes, section he's got like he's really reaching deep, and then he's got this like this form just this little form here in this left this like sasquatch hanging out but really it's about the chin for me i think the chin is uh <laughs> is the most important part of this painting this catacrosian chin catacrosian <laughs> let's look at this picture on the right and let's ask the questions practicing looking for texture in a piece of art okay what kind of texture do you see how would it feel if you touched it and how did they make it look that way so we got this king here mm-hmm Where's the, what kind of textures? I can see like four feels, or five off the top. It feels of my very, head. very stony to me. Like it, you know, like very pulpy. Um, uh. Like, um, so there's that. Obviously, there's like some, some smoothness and like the highlight of the skin, but like a lot of this, this sort of grainy, almost stony quality to it. Uh, and then you've got this like sort of splotchy texture here, which must be the flowers or something he's holding. Um, I think so, yeah. So, so those are the three main ones I get. So, I see a metal. Do you see metal? Uh, I guess there's a necklace, maybe, but it's his hand looks more metallic to me than anything. It's, maybe I'm reading that wrong. Uh, yeah, maybe it does look kind of metal. I'm it, looking it at the looks crown. Like a, oh yeah, okay. And I see that because there's this interplay of light and dark. I'm also looking at the beard and the lip. Mm, I see. And so what does a beard feel like? Yeah. I mean, this feels a little smooth. Like, the the mustache feels uh, seems smooth by contrast. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then a beard on the side has got just that. You just got enough. Opinion. Just enough That's roughness a... to it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hell How about yeah. this? <laughs> this is awesome. Um, Where's the texture here? How many textures do you? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. So many, man. Yeah, so I mean, there's a lot. I mean, you keep looking every at every different material on this piece, and even within the skin, there's variations on texture, different kinds of hair. Let's uh, let's talk about this wood on the axe handle. Do you see wood there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right, how do you? How did he make the wood? What is he doing there? What element is he using? Uh, lines, it? lines, and I mean lines, shapes. I mean yeah. these triangles here are helping us get that the pulp of the wood, the grain of the wood. Um, Line. We see lines. We see sh shapes like in these like little uh, inorganic sort of curved triangle, you know, curved on the back, triangular things coming together like splinters. Yeah. Using those, um, there's a little bit of light play on it, so the. the oh, yeah. The darker recesses are darker, and then he's got that light sort of dancing around on the top of uh, the the on the top of it. And what's going on on the shoulder? Is there what does the shoulder feel like if you touched it? I think that'd be actually like leathery, smoother. You know, like he's it's a little sinuous, but like there's mm -hmm. kind of a smooth quality with the long sort of uh, stretched out like lines that are like kind of more horizontal. How about the ear? Ear looks like it'd be furry. <laughs> yeah. how, so how is that happening what's he using there um again the the fur is the lines here man this is for all, me, lines. all about the lines on the ear all about lines all about lines and color and then let's look 
snout and his little jowls. They seem like they'd be like rubbery. Yes. Color and line. You've got those, just these little white lines going up and down in there. It really makes it look like this rubbery kind of stretched out. Yeah. Leathery, rubbery nose. This is even like uh, pointed out in chat here uh, by Rocco saying that there's almost like there's some age shown to uh, this this model. Like the, Beautiful. Like the... Beautiful. Age shown by those little splotches on mm -hmm. age marks on his, his kneecap. Yeah, this... yeah, we could look at this one for a long time in terms there's texture on the metals. Let's uh, look at I, some metal. I just want to say that I want to. I have never wanted to cuddle a minotaur more. That that thing's adorable, <laughs> but but would also like would also smash you. <laughs> like this is a gentle giant, you know. Like this is yeah. Like this is the party member in your in your D and D group that's like massive strength, low int, but has the heart like the heart of gold, yeah. you know. Right. I see. Also, these little. Just these little brown there. dots on the horn here mm -hmm. and there. Mm -hmm. It's probably dried blood, you know? Yeah, so you can paint a horn, and you can paint it, like, with a beige, and then with an agrex or beige, a little lighter. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in reality, the bone's got little marks in it, mm -hmm. and you can help yourself by adding that texture into your models that will really make them pop and show mm -hmm. differences in texture. And the more you put textures next to each other, the more it makes all textures shine out. So here's metal. Metal, there's lots of different ways to do it. This is the non-metallic metal. All about value. That is how this is done. You can get a smoother finish, depending on your lines. But really, to make something look like metal like this, you need to study how people are painting metal with light and dark next to each other. Mm -hmm. you, trick, you trick the brain into making it look like metal. So here we can see texture created by value, and we'll get to value. Ooh, more texture here. Hell yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. The marbles are and, pretty sweet. Yeah, the marbles. So what's giving the texture effect there? Light, I mean the illusion of light right like light and dark that's it illusion of light and dark you've got this dark bluish turquoise in the middle a little lighter turquoise two light spots at the top a couple little light reflections here and there and then the blue or the green on the bottom reflecting the the grass and if you zoom in and look really close you're like oh yeah this is just a blotches of colors but the interplay with the whole piece because it's right next to this other texture that's called contrast we're going to get to that mm -hmm. really makes it look like these awesome jade glass beads yeah that's really cool what other textures do you see here and, and, and you're going to notice that like the highest level painting this every texture will be super clear as to what it is so what yeah. else do you see here and how are they the, doing the fur on the chin you've got the skin the, the skin actually comes in a couple different textures because you have the really rough knees you can see. Love it. Like the sort Beautiful. Of... I didn't even see that initially. Yeah. Very cool. There's a skull like here, so we got some smooth bone, obviously. This staff is a little off texture for me. This is doesn't quite read as wood to me. Mm. Um, it feels a little bit more like maybe petrified like, wood. Yeah, it's like, been like petrified. It looks like almost jade at the yeah, like it, at the bottom, it gets it has this like sort of thickness and heft. But as we as my eye like kind of moves over the piece, I feel like it's. I might, yeah, I feel like it's almost brittle in the center here, like it's going to snap. Uh, because I see a, a little rust at the top of the staff. Yeah, so maybe that's that's intentional. Because we got some rust. Little, little watches up there. Yeah. I really love what you said about the differences in the skin texture. So you can paint your whole model and have the same. Mm -hmm. But if you look at your own body, not all your skin looks the same. So you pointed out the knees. Can I point your attention to the, the knuckles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, like, the belly. Yeah, the belly was the other area. Like, this is, this seems paunchy and, like, and, uh, you know, like, uh, wrinkly even. And that's how you're going to get something really interesting to look at by doing all your textures. Let's look at the hat here. Metal as fuck. <laughs> like, yep. there's almost an ethereal quality to the, uh, to the, the sort of bucket portion. And then the, the idol on it is, has, like, all the heft. Yeah. Now, do you think that this would look as good with 
out that center portion with that bluish icon different no. kind of metal no i no. think it, it needs that it needs that icon you gotta have contrast so here we have contrast and texture that really makes both of them read like metal because your eye has something to differentiate it from mm -hmm. all right value tinting and shading it's just darkness or lightness so we just looked at value used to create the non-metallic metal effect it can show dimensions by shading in two dimensions give depth you've got lighter values which indicate where the light is hitting you've got darker values of values that where light is not hitting uh, that's called tone the tint or the shade is called the tone so let's take a look at the tonal variation we're going to spend some time on value because knowing where to put your values it's going to make your mini paintings better. So this is one of the best still lifes just ever made. So Mephisto, where is the light coming from? Uh, it's coming from like sort of the front left. Yeah. How do you know that? Uh, because that's where uh, the lighter stuff is, is in that front left portion and the, and the shadows stretch away from it. That's it. When you're painting your minis, you do the same thing. This you is a... up to where the light is coming from. Anytime you start to become serious about art, one of the first things they're going to make you do is paint a stupid bowl of fruit. It's one of the first things they, they did to us growing up. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Time to do a bowl of fruit. Um, and, you, and when you're practicing, you're, well, when you're practicing your eye, you're saying, where is the light coming from? Mm -hmm. And looking and seeing where the shadows are where the lights are and why they're doing that. And then you practice it on your own. So your hand gets strong too. So right. here do we have a contrast between light and dark, subtle or intense. Um, it's actually like, it's, it's prominent, but I don't think it's the starkest contrast I've ever seen in, in this style. Yeah, I think so. Like <laughs> lemons, baby. Thanks for the biddies, Brent. Um, and does it, is value used to draw your eye? in this piece in any way i mean you're being you're drawing it's drawing you across uh the lemons are certainly the most prominent but like you know it's it's pretty centered piece so you, like you want to look at these like these apples or uh, here at the center these peaches or whatever they are um but i like the cup the cup is really where like i end um because it's in con it's it itself is in contrast to the color on the left side it's yeah. a very this is a very imbalanced piece so we've got a lot of color for, for two thirds of it, and then a, a rather lack a lack of color for that final third. Yeah. Um, and do you see value on that cup and plate that's creating a texture? Yeah, I mean the metal. It looks like metal, right? I mean it's yeah. like a metal saucer here. And all you got to do that is that little H of white. Yeah. A little that rim of the cup has an H on it. It's a sideways H. That light comes across. You gotta practice that if you want to do metal that way. Just practice again and again, and look at pictures like this. That see where those little H. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, paint those lemons. <laughs> paint those lemons. That's right. All right, so we got some value. This piece on the left. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, where's the light coming from in this piece on the left? Uh, this would be kind of top right ish. More center. Actually, this is more center on. Yeah, center maybe a little bit right. Yeah, yeah, center, uh, center right. Um, what's cool about this one that um, is actually this this little metallic apple down here in the corner. Yeah. So, I think that's where you're getting the most value. But this causes a uh, sort of center on you. She has to get the reflection here off of her shawl or her like hair tie or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually see that kind of texture pattern from uh, her shoulder thing on the little glossy apple. So where's our lightest values and darkest values? Let's look at those. Well, the lightest value is her neck. Like it's super white. This is the closest we get to white is, is yeah. on her neck. Uh, the darkest is be directly behind her for the most part. And here's something that you should know. If you have something with metal and you painted that metal up to pure white, nothing else in your painting can go up to pure white. I will not register the texture as metal anymore. Uh, Got to be careful when you're doing that. I like I, uh, on the right when you deploy Catacross. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> <laughs> He's got his bill ready to pay his tithe. Yeah. So oh. this is an interesting piece. Let's look at this piece on the right. So we this got this is, monk this with is the, the skull. 
Yeah, Plague Monk versus Jean Grey as chat gang has called this. <laughs> um, so we got values here. Where's the lightest and darkest values? Uh, his elbow, then, uh, just above his elbow, is and and actually on his the back of his palm, his hand, uh, sort of the. Do you see a triangle created by values? Um, uh, he's got light on his no schnoz, like right on his beak, light yep. on his elbow, light on his hand. So there's yeah, a there's that triangle again. Yeah, and so, so your eye is going to go to that, the points of that triangle, and it's going to create, it's just a nice effect for you to see. Uh, do we have depth here that's suggested by the value? I think so. I mean, he, he's, mm -hmm. he, he looks like he's standing kind of, uh, well, praying, rather kneeling, sorry, sorry, uh, sort of sideways or off kilter. Yeah. Um, so when you're painting in, when you're painting in two dimensions, you need to use value to make depth because it's in two dimensions. Otherwise, you don't have depth because it's flat. When you're painting a mini, you need to use value to create depth because it's so tiny that natural light will not create the proper shadows. So you need to have that darkness in there. Otherwise, it's just going to look kind of strange. Mm. Color. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. This is what we could spend all day on. And we're not going to spend too long on it. We're just going to look. Okay. And, man, you could go on forever. Books and books and books have been written on color. Mm -hmm. We know what it is. It's sunlight that bounces off of something and then goes into So it's, in fact, the opposite of what you're seeing. Because whatever that the object absorbs, it doesn't bounce that back at you. So tomatoes are, in fact, not red. Mm. That's what perceive is perceived by your brain as through your eye. It's dependent on light. So there must be light in order to receive color. Mm -hmm. So that's why you always have to think about light and where light is coming from mm -hmm. in your piece. Different lights can have different colors to them, which is super interesting. Color is like the most important thing in interpreting because color is the most connected to emotionality in a piece. Mm -hmm. There are so many aspects of color. The history of color is fantastic. Putting the pigments and the Phoenicians with their Tyrian purple dye who exterminated an entire species of mollusks. Just to get the that The color purple. wheels, the prisms, hues, values, warm colors, cool colors, saturation, which is how intense a color is, color schemes. It'll go on and on and on. This is not something we're going to cover today. We're just going to look at the pieces and enjoy the colors. I, the see, I, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I love the one on the left. It's very moody um, and abstract, and my brain's already starting to write a story for it. Uh, the one on the right is pretty uh, as uh, pretty what you see, what you get, and feels a lot happier to me. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about these two pieces in terms of saturation. Mm -hmm. I don't see much difference in the saturation throughout the whole piece. But in the one on the left, I see saturation used to draw my eye to the middle. Mm -hmm. I got this brighter, more rich red in the middle, and then on this red that's almost approaching brown, and then it's even got its complement right next to it in that green and brown on the right-hand side there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the form of, uh, looks to be like some male here. Um, it's There's a lot of science and math in colors, so you got to know your primary colors, your tertiary. Yeah, this is fantastic. Look at identifying triadic color scheme. You can't go. Yeah, you can um, even. But when you're thinking about color, think about what kinds of color, how the colors help you to see texture, how the colors guide your eyes, what kind of colors were chosen and why, the mood of the colors. So if we go back to, um, let's go back to this guy right here. You could paint this piece without the purple, couldn't you? And would it seem as magical? No, no, actually, might like a like a red fire light instead of a pink fire light. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you make this like a, a red instead of the purple, then you place this piece in like a like a home with a hearth. Yep. But the purple, especially since you're doing purple green, though, I think makes it. I think it was a very yeah. smart choice. Color choice impacts emotionality, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, do you see? Any complementary colors in here, or any analogous colors, or maybe a triad? 
I think the 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 or the places where they've used orange against a, a largely cool blue backdrop are the the big standouts. Yeah. So you get a much wider triangle here on this one. Um, Oops. Spoilers. Okay, let's look at this Sergio Calvo piece. Okay. Uh, narwhal. <laughs> yeah, a narwhal man. Uh, the rust oh, and so so we're 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 rocking uh we're rock we're 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 on the orange blue scheme here, so we've got a rust uh, you know we've got the rust is gonna re be on that orange and then like the, the rest of the piece kind of has this like the a blueness to it with the metal, um maybe even like inside of a shell kind of quality, not so much a metal like, this yeah. is really cool, uh and one thing he did really nicely is he brought the white up on the shoulder so i can actually yeah. like kind of see uh like like i the, i'm looking at this this is this is very this this one has been done a lot of justice by color by use of color um, yeah i think so if you get rid of all these and turquoises and purples mm -hmm. he's just not he's just not living under the water anymore yeah this tells the whole story of where he lives and that seems really simple but that's color choice. Well, that's I, an intentional color choice. I even think he's he's standing on like a seafloor here, right? Like, look at yeah. that. Like you could practically do a resin pour over the top of this whole model if you wanted to ruin it. But like, <laughs> like it, it's like it's almost like this. This is this is taking place under the sea. This guy is standing there in water. So I think this is pretty cool. I and I think you've got this cool choice with like the lip of the narwhal man. Mm -hmm. And then you just got those little bits of pink elsewhere. It's not overdone. Mm -hmm. The pink is like accent color. Well, the rest of the metal is primarily blue. A little bit of green to show, I think, rust effects. Yeah. And uh, I think that might take away from the lip if it's a little too pink. Well, but then you, you've you got this motif, too, because there's just a little pink in his skin, too. Yeah, well, that, that pink on that lip, you can actually see it just, just a touch of it on, on the shoulder pad, a touch of it on the bracer, a touch of it on the gut plate. There's just a tiny dabs of that pink brought into some of these metals so that it's co it's co very cohesive. And it, so we're thinking about color here. How does... The reflective sheen is at perfect angles to the rock and the model, is what Brent oh, says yeah. in here in chat. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, you asked me a question. I kind of missed it. You cut out a bit. Uh, mood. What kind of mood do we get just via color here? Well, I mean, I actually think this is a happier piece, <laughs> even though it's on the cooler tone. But that's because uh, the the pal like the palette on the skin and the f the lines in the face. Uh, this does not. I mean, this is like the assassin in uh, in uh, in what's it called, Rick and Morty? Like, oh boy, here I go killing again. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he doesn't seem upset to me. He seems really like yeah. He's very tranquil. He's, he's old, like he's gonna stick around a lot longer. Yeah, like he's seen some shit and like he's okay with it. <laughs> um, I like that his proportions are even a little like a little awkward on the uh, the sculpt. Like they're like uh, it's very uh, like a s proto natural like figure. He's got a girth to him, like yeah. big big haunches like. This is a cool sculpt. Yeah, he's so, super radical. Yeah, this is this is awesome. All right, so let's before we get into principles, we're gonna look at this piece. We're gonna do it all together. We're gonna talk about line, shape, color, form, texture, everything. Okay. All so this is on you, man. So show me what you've learned. How are you gonna identify lines and textures and forms oh. and values? I see it. I see a lot of lines actually in the pool itself, which is also a lot of color. Um, that color then reflects up on the legs, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got some texture on the again on the knees, the the uh, the elbows. Um, you know that's pretty cool. Um, I like the ice cream as a little splash, kind of hidden off in the side. Um, the values, a lot of that's going to be on like sort of her. Uh, her backside, her love handle here, and her and her chest. So you get the the light, the light play. The the one that could you go back to the shot before this? So the one thing that's throwing me off with this piece is I feel like the light's coming from two places. Mm -hmm. 
So we get the light here, shoulder, uh, shoulder front, top down on, on our hands and stuff like that. And then when you flip to the next picture, we've got a second light source coming out of her backside. So this. Yeah, is... I'm wondering if she's inside a pool, like an indoor pool. Maybe. Maybe. And then the lighting is just, I mean, the metal looks good here on the bar. That's a really good metal. And that, that, that's telling me the light's coming straight, straight down. Mm. Right. Is, is how that reads. Cause you got the, the brightest point is right on the top there, but her form feels a little off. I feel like the light is off on her chest mm. uh, and front when you, especially when you go to the front shot, like I feel like the light's off on the front. This feels off. Because that light on that post says straight down. The light, the lighting, the value on her says it's coming at an angle from the front. Uh, you see what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, this, 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 is, this is causing a disharmony for me the more I look at this, actually. I, it seems I, like one that you we probably have to see in person since there's so much going Yeah, probably. But I, I, really do like the, um, I really do like the water, though. This is my favorite part by far. I like the lines. Isn't that colors. cool? Yeah, and the really water cool. creates a very so here in the water you have a le less realism. You got more abstraction. You got this kind of nod to Van Gogh with these swirlies. Yeah, it's really brave to paint that way. I think, mm -hmm. which in in turn emphasizes her in a via a contrast between her natural skin. I really I like you got these freckles on her skin. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna use a restroom and then we'll do principles. Principles. All right. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. So uh this is uh this is his show. Uh but I'm supposed to feel some dead air. Um I just want to go back to the the narwhal for a minute there. I never thought a narwhal could be freaking awesome <laughs> until today. So uh I'm I'm pleased uh that, that narwhal was a badass. And uh like you said, Rocco, he has stabbed people with that horn and and lived to tell the tale. So, but yeah, the water in that in that previous piece is by far my favorite. It's it's amazing. Nautical beastmen are my fucking jam. I was talking to uh, Chuck Moore the other day. Yeah, yeah, I know my piece. Thanks. Um, I was talking to Chuck Moore the other day, and I I said the 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 next creature or the next army I want to see the next one hundred percent new army. Is I want to see like some nautical like some nautical beast folk, like I'm my greatest uh, criticism of IDK is that they went so fantastical with the Namardi themselves and the armor and the weapons and they they went really fantastical with all of that stuff, but then like the the mounts are like super normal. I'm like it's just a shark and just an eel. I'm like why didn't you go crazy with it? You went crazy with everything else. So that, that thing bothers me. But what I'd love to see is an army that just, that goes crazy with the subnautical. And in particular, uh, in particular, if you've seen Alawi from League of Legends, uh, to spit on the game, but Alawi is this like Pacific Islander, like squid lady. And she, she thick. I would love to see something like that in, in Age of Sigmar. I think that'd be really freaking cool. Plus it would be a hobbyist dream for, uh, the, the textures you you get to go yeah yeah allow is like just a really cool lol is broken so, as fuck all right welcome back okay i typed this wrong it's supposed to say i will give you a definite i'm sorry yes, and we're looking at the principle before we go into this uh a kind of halfway point between an element and a principle perspective it's it you don't really have a good place for it but perspective is making thing look like it's three-dimensional so not really that important for us since we're painting 3D mm -hmm. models, which are already at perspective, but you can get perspective by overlapping, uh, shading. Something will be less in focus the further away it is in the background. Foreshortening, the, low, the closer something is to the bottom of your canvas, the closer it is to you. The bigger something is, the closer it is to you. Important stuff to know, but... Okay. We're going to skip it. Let's skip it. Okay, off. so I'm going to go. I didn't get uh, all of my pictures loaded in to this PowerPoint, so we're just going to go here. Okay. 
You get the little infinity screen there. Mm. Let's make this big. Mm. Okay, man. Emphasis. Emphasis is where your eyes go. Emphasis is what you want to show. Immediately on this gentleman. Like, yep. Immediately. The light. He, he's the brightest form. Uh, the triangle puts him at the center of it. Um, so that's all the, the biggest question you're going to ask if you're analyzing something. Where is your eye going when you look at the piece? Or if you're making your own art, where do you want the eye to go? The, que the answer, more often than not, when you're doing miniature painting, is the face. Hmm. Hmm. So know. here, you noticed value. We got all that light. Yeah. Super dramatic light on this man mm -hmm. who's about to be executed. Well, the lines oh, are all pointing at him, too. The guns, they're just straight lines go. at this guy. Lines, using lines. Uh, what other elements do you see that are emphasizing that person? I mean, the shape, uh, that triangle, like we mentioned. Uh, the light even casts a triangle toward him, right? Um, We've even got negative space going on, eliminating everything mm -hmm. around, causing it to only the action in the Ground. Yeah, there's some negative space behind him with the hill. Uh, color usage, by the way, like his colors are very clean. Everyone yes. else's are pretty muddled. Uh, and then we've got this pop of red under, like underlining, underlining him essentially, um, like holding him up as as the focal point. His arms mm -hmm. kind of created two more lines. Everything is at that face. Yeah, every all the elements working here in harmony at his face it's like nothing particularly skilled just a couple little lines not too much shading it's all the elements working in hard together that's what gets you a good piece not like crazy techniques not infinite blending unless that's what you're going for not ridiculous blends and shading and the best techniques that anybody's ever seen it's all about harmony and emotionality all your elements working together here Right. Technique wise, anybody in this chat could do this. Little splotches here and there. It's pretty easy. Emotionality wise, this is where the artist is becoming like the chef and all these ingredients working together. Okay. All right. How about this one? Where does your eye go? Mm, I mean, it's the artist is trying to draw my eye to the uh, to the church. Yeah. And how is that happening? Uh, contrast, predominantly. I mean, church is white, the background's black. Um, a lot of inorganic shapes behind, organic shapes up front. You got it, um, yeah. There's an illusion of light, but I don't think this one cares about light so much, or value so much, compared to some other stuff. Yeah, it's a little abstract, isn't it? These yeah. trees are like, super huge. It's like this... Uh, it really gets the sense. I, I know exactly what this artist is saying. This is this church is foreign to this place. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a little more realistic than these ridiculous wavy trees that are like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know, kind of like wonky, childlike world almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Emphasis. Yeah. So you're thinking about emphasis in your work. This one's a little harder. It is, yeah. But uh, I uh, the piece, the first thing I actually notice is the lady in the in on the far right here. Um, this is where my my eye my yeah. gaze goes. Uh, but the artist is trying to drag me to the middle here. Yeah, uh, with this, uh, maybe the, the the composition obviously. is we've got a diagonal comp uh, composition, right? So everything's kind of sloping down into the right. Uh, but all the light. Uh, the value is placed in the center, uh, the center left. So that, that brings me back up over there. Um, this is, this is all about the, I think the sort of hidden lines for me. Um, this banister kind of frames the piece. Um, their postures kind of box me in on this one figure on this conversation. Um, I see like a, this is your positive space in here where there's stuff going on. Nothing here. Yeah. Nothing really in the background. Yeah. Oh my, there's a memento for you. Another catacrosian uh, tithe to be Yeah, I, th I think someone's leaving uh, leaving their taxes out um, to be collected. So we're talking about 
emphasis and what elements are being used to create emphasis here so where's the eye going uh, i mean it goes right on the face of this uh, of this uh, skull right uh, there little, little little bit on the little bit on the feather um but the feather is boring uh once you get to it so your eye goes mm -hmm. elsewhere and it stays Very on the space cool. so yeah it's pretty pretty ballsy to make that feather white and that still you're going to that skull yeah i mean it is because you look at that feather and then you go got it and then you immediately you're drawn right onto the face of that skull because of the texture uh going on you've got a little bit of that light play on the on the brow essentially um, yeah and then you've got a lot of more it's just a lot more interesting lines and 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 color to the skull itself yeah you've got kind of all this orangeness around the skull and then the front of this really it's getting smoother. Everything else is kind of buffed and ring. Yeah, around. almost like things feel out of focus. Uh, uh, things feel a little bit out of focus the the further you get away from the skull, like to where the far left here, it's just muddled gray, right? And then I want to show you something else. I had uh... oh, this is full screen. So we're gonna go here. Let's talk about emphasis. Oh, this guy, <laughs> like that. All right. So what elements are being used to make emphasis? Uh, I mean, this is lines, shade, or line, what is it, value, I guess is what you call it instead of shading, right? Um, yeah. And the simple fact that he's, only he's the drawn face. well. Yeah, he's drawn well. The rest is not. So maybe that's more about a lot about space. Yeah. Like there's... Or texture, just a, a contrast in work done or not. It's pretty interesting. So if you're painting your most of it is this abstract, really blended, mostly shaded, but then the face is. That's called the John Singer Sargent technique. Your army's still going to look great. You have all these looking faces. Now, I would like to see somebody go this hard with it and just have the oh, super yeah. photorealistic oh, faces. Yeah. Contra... And then the rest is just like super simple sketches off their... Yeah, like uh, three color contrast type, like everything else, and then the faces are photorealistic. Yeah, yeah that'd be awesome. But then, so this is a principle that I kind of use here on this siege army. Mm. So the faces all look like this. Then down at the bottom, you know, it's just fading off into not. Re I didn't really paint those volumes up. I wanted the hands and the faces all to be brighter, so it can always draw your eye. Mm. So when you're thinking about you think about strategies, armies. Like, this is just a bunch of blue horrors. And so you've got to make visual interest appear within the the monotonous unit type, right? You, so you had a lot of... You had a color, lot of... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I had a lot of horrors. My strategy was color and doing interesting things with the uh, with the model as a canvas. You know, draw this John Singer Sargent idea, just do the face and the rest can be just like a... A blob of color and it works with um the idea of the army too like they're all kind of coming into existence and changing in and out so why wouldn't their feet just be a swirl of color and their creepy face be coming out first that's actually really cool you had to do a lot of heavy lifting to get me to care about horrors by the way and you did uh, thank you <laughs> like I, I i they're just some of the most uninteresting models to me uh but, yeah, I did. I did my best. Uh, but but like this, this makes sense. Actually, this photorealistic face focusing on the face, and then yeah, here's another example, not quite as uh, pronounced, but you can see how that face gets really, mm -hmm. and then you're just kind of like sketchy and given up almost to the outside. Yeah. So that that's where your eyes go. So you can use not painting well to paint well. <laughs> Super cool. All right, let's go on to balance. Um, so you got to think of all your objects having visual weight. This is what we say. We mean when we say human beings have a mathematical mind. Ever since you're a baby, you're living in terms of math. You reach your hand out to grab something, you're living in terms of measurement and distance and length and volume. It's how we learn. We learn with our hands. Human beings never stop thinking in terms of math it, it governs our entire existence mm. so you're cheating yourself if you're not thinking things mathematically where's the visual weight in here we've got these objects balanced um 
you've got these two bodies almost over on the left and two bodies on the right. And then this kind of like the the Venus is standing almost on the right hand. She's leaning, like or the or the leaning, and then the shell is more on the left hand side. And then so... you've also got this tree and this um whatever this blanket. There's almost a, almost symmetrical quite balance here. Uh balance gives stability stability and equ like equilibrium. There, there's a lot of different kinds of balance. You can have symmetrical, asymmetrical, uh, like a radial, like a circular balance, mm -hmm. radiating out from the center of a piece. Let's talk about balance here. This is uh, what kind of balance, math? What kind do you see? Uh, I mean, this is... Uh, uh, I mean, I think it's very symmetrical. It's relatively symmetrical, but it's got a kind of a radial movement to it. Yeah, it's almost like two radials yeah. side by side. Yeah, exactly. And only barely hits my trypophobia. Huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so bal like balance um, in your miniatures, if you got one guy with his bright hand that's down at the bottom to be really bright, or maybe put a really bright flower down there, mm -hmm. uh, you, you're always thinking in terms of weight. And it, when you're setting up your army for display, you're thinking of sizes as being weight as well. You want a good dis distribution of your sizes. Oh, yeah. Look at this one. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the worst. You don't like... No. Oh, my goodness. I, I hate this. This is like, okay. uh, no, no, this is, it's too symmetrical. And then, like, I know what you did here, and it, I don't like it. So it's, like, almost symmetrical. It's the illusion of symmetry. And then, like, now you have to start looking for the differences, and I fucking hate it. <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to leave it up and see you freak out a little. Yeah, like, I'm just like, no, I, ah, I can't handle this. <laughs> like, I can't. What is, what is this piece saying to you? What is the paint thinking? Uh, what number comes to mind when you look at this piece? Two. Ah, stop it. <laughs> no. Okay, how about this one? This is better. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is better. Um, oh, this is a. This one again starts with the illusion of symmetry. Um, it does it a lot better than the previous one, where it was like, just, the like you fold it in half and then change the faces. Um, this one's got a nice line right down the center, uh, with his with the uh, gentleman's face and hands. Uh, but then you have like the characters, the background, the negative space. Uh, all of that stuff is 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 changing and creating movement. And visual interest. Which yeah. Is like feet from the kid versus feet from the mom. Uh, so do you feel stability in this one? Yeah. Yeah, this one's good. Maybe a little too rigid, but uh, but it's still great. Frida. Huh. I have to ponder this one a moment. I'm sorry. Um, man, this is messed up. <laughs> Frida Kahlo, um, little, uh, I mean, even the colors are, are, are kind of in contrast in this one. Um, it's, it's a balanced image. Um, but again, the, like you're looking, you start like wondering what the incongruencies are and they're very pronounced. Um, yeah, I feel like, so you got like this unbalanced in terms of the the color and the value of the but i feel like the the uh, metaphorical or the the uh yeah the metaphorical weight of the heart being on the right hand side somehow like it's an abstract idea makes it more balanced because mm. that's her right her heart that's her being okay. and that balances it out somehow it's well, very strange the one on the left actually has more power though yeah, she holds. But the, then she, she holds the scissors, and her hand is on top. So like, uh, but like then the other one has her heart. I, I look at it as more of two halves of the heart. We're just seeing the the inside. Like you could take this piece of the heart and lay it over the top of this piece of the heart. Oh, it's very cool. Two, I think it's two two halves. We're just seeing the reverse. Yeah, this one's nice. said this like these. I feel like this is one you could coded like coded language art. For yeah. me, is a big turn off, but when it's done right and it just like gives you ideas and the ideas 
the aesthetic of the painting, you know they got it down. Well, for instance, like if you look at the heart strings, right? You know, that's that's what we got going on here. Um, the heart strings are like actually like wrapped around this one's arm, even. So even though like it looks like a tiny skull, perhaps in her hand or something like that, um, or a, maybe like a button, a skull, something like that. Um, even though she's got that, she has still has this heart string binding that arm. So like all the power in this piece is on the left is on the left hand side. Um, even though she's the one with like kind of the the sort of like inside out heart or the the reverse side, uh, yeah. she, she's the one with the scissors um, or forceps perhaps like clamping on the the bleed out. That could actually be a clamp. Um, that's crazy. This is this one I I could stare at for a while. Yeah, definitely. So. Oh, balance. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Hell okay. Yeah. Are you ready Some for Matisse? the second most important thing we're going to talk about? What's, uh, what's this? Color. This is contrast, man. Okay. Contrast is difference. Mm -hmm. There are so many kinds. It doesn't just mean light and dark. Most of the time, it means light and dark in mini paint. You can have contrast in color. Texture. You can have contrast in texture. You can have contrast in lines, value, shape color, temperature, size, pattern, so many different ways. So here we have contrast with what elements in this uh, Matisse? Well, there's there's texture contra contrast. There's some line contrast. There's some color contrast. Um, mm -hmm. The color contrast is a, a touch subtle here. But, uh, yeah, just like strange warm and cool, and you're yeah. not sure yeah, the, is warm and cool the, in this. The, yeah, the warm, cool... Um, I suppose a, a touch of value in there, um, but is really, it, like the green, the green is like either warm or cool depending on what you looked at last. Yeah, but because it goes like warm, cool, warm, cool. But if you look at it, cool, warm, warm again, it's very weird. Yeah, same thing with that that the sort of pink purple in the top left. Like this is a very warm purple. Um, it's crazy, man. This is awesome. <laughs> like this is. We're gonna we're gonna spend uh, most of the rest of the day talking. About yeah. Uh, yeah. The contrast, like in the like in the symmetry, are right, in American Gothic. Here we are. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's it, what kind of contrast? So elements. Well, the main one I see is with the was with the lines. Uh, in his face in particular, they're very rigid and pronounced, whereas she's very smooth. Um, even the focus of the paintings, in contrast, like where like where her eyes are and where his eyes are, there's a that's a contrast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, We've I'll, got a lot of different textures, yeah, on their clothing in particular, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot of like sort of rough versus smooth going on. How about this one? Unbelievable. Um, seeing a lot of uh, texture contrast again with this. Um, a stark contrast between the the negative space and the and the positive space. Oh, definitely, because she's wearing white, yeah. Yeah, this is black on, or this is white on black, man. This is, it does, pretty much doesn't get any more contrasted than that. Um, the texture's the big one again here. Like, even the dress. Yeah, like the hair with these beads in it. Yeah. yeah beads smooth. are really smooth, and they got that nice white dot on them. Mm -hmm. Well, like, even the cloth on the dress, this this pattern here, has a different texture mm -hmm. from, from the, the dress itself. Mm -hmm. So, I can almost like feel the fibers in that dress. It's pretty cool. Oh, this is uh, yeah. We'll get into this a little later. Let's look at some mini. Hell yeah! <laughs> All right, Sergio Calvo again. Little boy, you're going to hell. We're gonna think of we're gonna think of contrast. Okay. So we're thinking of things that are next to each other in contrast that makes one thing stand out. Right. What so, do you see, and what are you going to use in your art? So we've got the uh, so now we're on the blue the blue orange con uh, contrast here a lot. So like the buckle, you got blue on orange skin. 
basically. You've got yeah, the... just that little bit of tint to the skin is all. It... Yeah, you've got the blue. You've got the blue sort of uh, uh, tattoos on orange skin again. So like those actually pop or stand out. If you had done like a, you know, a red tattoo, that you want to see, you want to read that on this. Um, blue. You've got another. You're playing with a blue or orange axiom again, or in this case, silver gold uh, on the belt buckle. Um, you've got some texture contrasts with the scale versus metal, uh, and then even just two different types of metal because you've got the smooth and then you've got the more porous metal uh, of the hilt. Uh, hair and face. Yeah, uh, the fur versus skin, fur versus metal. Like a lot of texture contrast here, and then and then really really like leaning heavily on the blue orange thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the rest of the elements we've got uh, move movement, rhythm, and pattern, and we're gonna go through those pretty quickly because these are more for two dimensional art. You can still think about them in terms of like what your forms are doing, mm -hmm. like what direction your model might be pointing hand or the rhythm of a composition, or the patterns of different bits of cloth between uh, different models. So here's movement. Mm -hmm. We've well, got lines used to create movement here. Soren came back and saw he wasn't the biddies leader for a little bit, had to drop the thousand oh, core girl. <laughs> thanks, thanks Soren. Here we've got some movement made with lines. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a beautiful piece. Beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. I really like this one for movement. Let's go. Let's focus on this one and see how we're cre how movements created. Uh, I think it, in this one, it's important to look at eye lines. like their look. eyes, like like where yeah, who's going. looking at what. Yeah, I, their eyes draw you in different directions depending, but there's sort of a circle, a circular. This guy in the in the left, he he gives no fucks about anyone in this scene. Looks like John Mox. <laughs> yeah, um, but then like everyone's focused on something else in this in this piece is actually really kind of cool. So that causes you to like you got lady focus on her dog. Lady on the banister could be looking at the gentleman, the bower, bowler, or the gentleman in the in the uh, in the Panama. Yeah. You've got uh, the lady drinking her, her cup, maybe looking at the man in the bowler, but possibly looking at the lady with her dog. I feel like she's kind of disgusted by, by this lady having a dog at the table. Um, I think so. And I think the guy with the beard is, like, waiting for her to be done. Talk yeah, he's, he's lost interest. He has completely lost interest in what's going on here, and he's just waiting. Everybody happily engaged. I don't know about that. I think some people... I, I think... Uh, I think Lady with the Cup is, is unhappy. And I think uh, Dude Leaning Over Girl with, like, out the hat, without the beard. He's got a little bit of a goatee, it looks like, maybe. Uh, I think he is he is impatient. Look at that lean. It's very, it's very like, aggressive. Yeah. It's very in her space. This is not a, a like, a, this is a very, this, this is contrasting, actually, in the lean of the guy with the beard. The guy with the beard is leaning away. His posture is open, you know, arms out to the side and wide and, and behind. His head tilted up into the and up into the left. Uh, the gentleman on the far right, he's dressed differently. Uh, his lines go in a different direction. He's got vertical lines, or as opposed to uh, he's predominantly more vertical lines as opposed to like the horizontal sort of texture lines you can see on the gentleman on the left. He's leaning in. His arms are clo in closing. Um, these two features are like these two figures are the most contrasting in 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 this. Yeah. So you see, now as we get more into prints and away from prints, about compositions and pieces as a whole, and instead of well, the elements are more like these really tiny things, how do they make this technique? Was it with a stipple for a little texture? Mm -hmm. And now we're talking about bringing it all together and the cohesion and the harmony is what's really going to make your piece stand out. If you're thinking about color and texture. And well, those are the two most important value in terms of how they make the feel as a whole. Mm. Well, there's some pattern. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. uh, here we go. Here's some more, uh, some movement. Definitely. Mm. This one's a classic. Um, 
Yeah. He, he was a chess player. Actually, he his art life to pursue chess and uh, became obsessed with it. Mar- and Mar- his Mar- wife was so pissed. Yeah, his wife's so pissed at him that she glued the, the pieces to the board on their honeymoon. <laughs> Deschamp. Yeah. The wave is classic. We've got some pattern here. Uh-huh. Um, so let's take... Uh, oh, Greenhouse are so beautiful. I, w- I hope somebody does a Seraph. Does a Seraphon Alabrihe army? Yeah, wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah. Um, yeah, so we got some more pattern here. Pattern created via lines and shapes. Pattern. Pattern. But uh, let's go over to Putty and Paint. And favorite. Um, let's pick some some pieces, some miniature pieces, and let's use what we've developed. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right, so we're just going to go to uh, top. Oh, here we go. Here's a nice one. I, how did I already know you were, you were clicking on that one? <laughs> All right, man. Mephisto, right. show me what you've learned. We're going to talk about the elements, the print. I think we, you know what to focus on most is yeah. line, texture, and color, and then emphasis, contrast, and value. Yeah. Yeah, so the value, the the light, we've got this this glow of a hearth off behind this 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 model, this figure, so with that orange color being used to kind of help express it. Um, but the light is very much on this this feature, the left half to the left half of this this uh, character's face. So we're kind of immediately drawn to its face. Light contrast in. Uh, the textures of the the fur and the and then the smoothness of the nose. Um, I see the wood texture coming through pretty predominantly. Um, color for doing like the ice and the the frost on the staff. Um, yeah, dude. I see, I really like this composition of the. Under the hat, the black brim, and then that red light over on the side. Yeah. I think that value contrast brings out his face a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of line work going always goes into fur, so those lines are pretty pronounced. Yeah, you can tell they spent a lot of time, and we got that face was given some tender care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what else we got. Top. All right, man. This orc is awesome. (laughs) Is it working? Can't tell if it's working. There Um, it is. There you go. Papa Yambo. Big child creatives. Would this be a bust then? Yeah. Yeah. So this is uh this is pretty cool. Um, I feel like a criticism would be I want that highlight to come a little higher on the face. Yeah, just a lot more contrast up on like the like the cheekbone and the schnoz, right? I just yeah. wanted to, I just wanted to come up a little bit brighter. Same thing with like uh the the sort of lines of the bandana here. But otherwise, I, I really dig it. I, I really dig this. It feels a little, like a touch muddled because I don't think the highlights come high enough. But um, beyond that, there's so much like detail here that has been like painted. We've got the metal of the coins, you know? Um, the actual sort of almost photorealistic eye, you know, like that that white speck there. And maybe maybe that's why the artist didn't go as high on the highlights because... That is the highest highlight in this entire piece. Is that eye, right? The the dot right above the uh, pupil. So maybe that's actually a, where the artist really wanted me to focus, looking at this bust. And so mission yeah. accomplished. Uh, you can see the sort of like texture of the uh, of the lips. Um, you know, a lot of good use of color though. Like a very, 
you know, the green purple. So now we're on the green purple axiom with a nice break in the brown, which is kind of cool. That's bold, bold move, friend. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the the brown leather vest, the the feathers yeah. I think could have been a little bit more colorful too. I think that that was an opportunity to to work in some of your purple elsewhere, or even this like we got this red crabby on top. I just want to see a little bit more color, I think, is what I'm saying. There's so much, it's, it's weird to say that because there's so much color already, but, like, I want just a little bit more color. Sweat faded cloth on yeah. the brim. Yeah, like, that, there's some so many good details and such tons of color here. Um, and I'm like, I want more color. <laughs> like just so that, like, it's nice to look in here and say, like, okay, how, how did you use values to make this metal look like metal? Hmm. Like, well, here it's dark, there's a little purple. Then it's like this brown, and then here it's like this really light. Here it's really light. And then there's just a little dot of light. This. And you think, oh, I can do that. It's just little dots put in the proper position. Mm -hmm. And if you spend your time looking and then you practice to make your hand strong too, you'll be able to do this. Mm. Yeah, those so like this, lights. you got this dark reddish brown, and then it's just some splotch, some splotch, and then little dashes like this. Yeah, little this, dashes. This is cool. I and do like course, this face. Of course, your hand might not be uh, able to do that just yet. You've got to practice to get your brush control, too. But feasibly, anybody can hit a little dot like that. Hmm. And so I ask you, if you can uh, accidentally put a little dot on your model, you could probably purposely put a little dot on your model. And then if you look in here, how you, you zoom in, you get this nice effect of this texture. You're like, oh, I can tell that this is a this bandana the... leather. Look at the detail of its, like, like it's like upper lip like the the sort of almost cracking skin yeah. and in two different directions but, for the lines yeah actually. but then if you if you go in and you look and that's not some meticulous difficult technique that's just little splotches with a regular color put in the right spot like these that's just little dot 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 little scratchies dot 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 mm. dot 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 that's just a little pure dot just put it in the right spot and if you're putting that in the spot with an eye towards your volumes and your values mm -hmm. of where the light should go, like this is the top of the lip, this is a cylinder. So this bottom part is going to be here. The lightest is going to be right here. What, what else do we see? Oh for, my God, uh, his face is a cylinder. <laughs> face is a cylinder, baby. Yeah, the man. whole face. That's why this face. in the middle is the lightest. Yeah. That's why this here is light. So like here you have this kind of lump of a chin yeah. and here but this high highlight on this half sphere is brighter than this lump on this little half sphere because this is further away from the center right Mom. yeah yeah that cylinders yeah i can't unsee it no <laughs> it's what fake. else is going on oh here's that one we saw earlier oh that freaking minotaur is awesome <laughs> just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Oh, look at this. Did we get a dragon? Where are we going? Oh. I think it just takes a while to load up. Yeah. Well, they're probably high res. Oh, he's so cool. I can't wait to analyze. Can you analyze this one solo so I can get more coffee? You got it. All right, cool. All right, man, I'm going to walk through line. Line is you to make texture here. To make this look old, old, old. We got splotches here to make this hat look a little bit dirty. We've got lines here to show texture. We've got lines and little dots coming down to show texture. And then this is for value here in terms of making this look like a coat. It comes all the way up to pure white. And once you practice that a bit, you realize you're like, man, black's really tricky. It goes from all the way to black to white. Does not work the same way with paint white should not go all the way down to black but black if you look at like a leather coat a picture of somebody comes all the way up to white so you practice looking at things then you practice doing those things and you get stronger at painting but it only works if you practice you gotta look and then you gotta practice it because if you don't work with your hands it doesn't go into your brain i tell this to the children all the time that's why we have all these materials for montessori for tactile learning is if you don't work with your hands it does not live inside your body you can know something uh, but it's just a rumor in your brain until it lives inside your body. Then it's true knowledge. And you can only get it to live inside your body when you can do it without consciously thinking about it. 
So here, look at these, just these little dots. And so we're thinking he's still doing line work down here on this the fat rolls of the squishy face baby oh he's a big baby of the squishy face big baby but down here he doesn't paint them up as white so you're thinking in terms of this whole head as a sphere getting lighter watch as i do getting lighter getting lighter up here is where your light is so like this highlights there's still lines to show f are way brighter than this down here. Even though this jowl, this fat roll might look like a cylinder, up here, that same top portion is gonna be brighter. This shadow down here of this skin, way darker than this, because you wanna bring it up to the face. So if you think about like, so if you're painting some ogre models for Warhammer, oftentimes people like the 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 shadow that's at the top of dark as the shadow that's in the armpit. You just paint that up a little bit. That's why you're thinking of spheres. We, okay, so we've got texture. We talked about line. We talked, uh, let's talk about movement. Um, the nose is pointing forward. This is pointing forward. Eyes looking this direction. Eyes looking this direction. Now, you could add a whole different emotionality to the by making this eyeball looking this way, looking at him. And he could be looking back at the big baby. And this guy could be looking down at both of them if you gave this grasshopper. Or he could be looking backwards, like they're escaping from something. But for this, it looks like they've been charging a while. That's all it takes, is what direction is the eye going to The colors really show the kind of world they're inhabiting. It looks kind of like 19th century. Um, like pre pre Civil War, with all the leathers and the muddy and the hat too. So they chose colors based on the model to try and make the best out of the model that they could get. I don't really like this. I might have cut this off. I think this is a distraction to the whole composition. I think it's just one too many shapes. In terms of principles, oh man, we could talk about color for because you've got this kind of like green and this like green sepia interplay, which is really think of this old, old like the earliest cameras. Oh, it's so cool. So that that kind of lends it. In terms of emphasis, I don't. My face does go to the dog because it's a dog. Um, I don't know. It really functions as like a whole space to me. I don't see too much emphasis. I do see a contrast between these textures. So my face definitely could go to the dude right here, the nose, because it is so different than everything else. You don't see these colors anywhere else in the piece. Not even on the hand do they get this like warm and rich and smooth. It really tells a good story. I like this a lot. It's just kind of a little goofy. So in terms of contrast and emphasis, we get that through texture and color here with this warm and then the green almost reading. It's this muted, cool texture. I also really like here how you got this fleshy eye of the dog and how that's a different guy's flesh. And then you just got a little bit of that brought into the nose here and the lip here. So this person definitely looked at the picture of a face and saw these like splotches and so all you do is just put some splotches on your model paint up the volumes do it with some dashes and lines and you well, get this really believable piece well splotches is the technical term for it right stipples <laughs> stippling right. you got your stipples you got your splotches you got your lines and your lines you got... yeah yeah um Real quick, a question here in, uh, in in chat gang. Is painting a 3D canvas easier than a 2D because the shape already exists? I feel like there is more responsibility or opportunity for a 3D painter because shape is so well defined. Uh, I don't know. I mean, both are difficult. Both are their own challenges. 
I, don't, I like the interplay of when you, because you, you most know, people aren't sculpting their own, they're going to get the, and I, I like the responsibility of trying to make that piece the best. It's, it's more of like a game than it is like a purely creative pursuit where you're in charge. And it's, it's collaboration, isn't it? Which I guess is why I like it so much being that I studied filmmaking, which is the most collaborative art. You, you got to do it justice and you got to use what's in. So in that way, it's also like, you know, the five obstructions, it's an interesting challenge and you can make the best art by be given a goal with this piece, use this piece, look at the piece, understand the sculptors, um, what the, understand what, what the sculptors given you and how you can do best with it. And it kind of gives you a guideline that just makes me smile because you, you get to try and do your best with the position that's in front of you. Whereas if you're starting your own thing from scratch, I feel like that's way harder, personally. I'm sorry, you cut out. It's way more what for the the um starting. It's way harder school. if you're starting from blank. If it's mm -hmm. you starting from blank, if you've got somebody who's made the sculpt for you, then you can take that and. I mean, in one, I don't know. It's an interest. It's a really interesting. Where there's no right answer, and then you just get to learn a lot about the person and what they like based on the answer. Um, and on one hand, you have like, oh, I want to do my best for the model, and I have to use the model. So that's like more pressure than being like, well, I started this thing from scratch, so I can do whatever I want with it. Uh, but you can also kit bash and add your own. Yeah, I'm not sure in that question of responsibility, uh, which one is more difficult to do. Yeah, so that's why this uh, this art is so interesting. Um, truly, truly, uh, the the most skilled are the people who sculpt their own miniature and then paint it to standards like this. So, so Mara, that, so that Mara Wolf. Like, <laughs> like, that must that must be just a. Uh, well, I guess it depends on who you are. Right? Want to be like that? If you're that kind of person, then definitely you're going to want to do that. For me, I like uh, it's a, it's like a. I like the collaboration aspect too. Uh, like I'm not sculpting and painting are they're both artistic, but they're they're two different uh, arts. I mean, in a sense, a lot of art is is art, right? But. Um, yeah, I've known a lot of 2D artists who were fantastic painters, but like couldn't throw a pot to save their life. Yeah, it's true. Um, but you can uh, you can use like your... that's why we talk about it in terms of like tactics oh, and strategy. Oh, this is applying awesome. applying one skill to another area as yeah. a shortcut for learning, and at at, a, at the very least, appreciating. So this is crazy. This is not something I would ever. Make. This is awesome. <laughs> so uh so there's actually like so we've got movement right oh baby we got movement <laughs> like we've got movement but like then we also have like the 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 strong man here is like is stoic is like the whole scene is around this guy it's great like he, he put he's putting on his show yeah he's playing his role his his he is unmoving. Like, at the other faces are, like, even in contrast with the emotion. Like, he seems happy, and the clowns are not happy. The one at the very, very top, like, this icon, icon is, like, mocking. But we've got, like, sad dog face ca uh, clown. We've got sort of panicked falling clown. And then we've got, like, uh, clutching, uh, clutching <laughs> his pearls while napkin clown, like, and then, like, we have strong man, kind of happy. It's it, this is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, it's got a cool um, the way he's created a sort of frame of it mm -hmm. with this L shape. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, everybody's body seems. They, oh, I don't know. It really captures the circus feel. And they're like kind of uh, like in in varying states of of. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Um... He's found a way to really work with the piece and not make the colors or textures or lighting distracting. It, it works in harmony. It really feels like the circus. And the whole, I mean, they really figured out that like the whole um, 
the harmony of the piece is what makes it feel circusy. Mm. And it's just kind of kind of wackadoo with all these circles and rings and uh, flamboyant borders Look at with a, a, the 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 these balls here down at the bottom. These strange, bizarre heads and twirls. Yeah, and... yeah well, you've got this um, like this this moon face here, and so we've got like we're on the red spectrum here with the lips and stuff. But then the because the contrast of like the sort of shininess of the lips and then that sort of uh, fleshy tongue, you it's it's it actually kind of works without having to go like with a weird color for the tongue and make it distracting, right? So like th this is good. Co this is good. This is a good uh, use of, of texture contrast. Um, yeah. To to not because again like you'd feel like oh maybe I should make that tongue pinker or I should make it. But then it, it's going to get too too striking for what is essentially the center of the model. Um, so like that that's actually very deft at not drawing your your eye too much toward that that point by just shifting the texture and the color slightly as opposed to dramatically. Uh, this uh, shawl, this curtain is great. That red is excellent. It it really is. And it's the most saturated thing, yet still doesn't draw your eye. Oh. And I can't really point out why that's not happening. Uh -huh. I think it's the the whole composition is that this is clearly like meant to be border. Yeah. It's just all really come together in harmony and really will reward you if you're looking around oh, yeah. spots like here, 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 here. And it's really, it lets you go on a journey. Yeah, I mean, even the... The lines are Perfect just content of the circus, I think. Yeah, the lines are are in contrast at all like in places. Uh, the wood is is nice. It does a good job of making the wood that they're standing on just a just a frame, just a a flat plane. It's pretty much the last thing I noticed was like that they're standing on a wood uh, on a wood. Uh, wooden yeah, I didn't notice floor. that till you said it. Yeah, it's like the last thing I noticed is this wooden plank floor they're standing on. Um, like a stage, like, like an actual stage. They're on a, on a literal stage, not just like in the center of a uh, uh, you know a ring or something. They're actually on a on a on a theater stage for this, which is really really cool. Um, yeah, and then oh, so you've got like the skin that looks really like waxy and pristine almost. There's not too many blemishes on the skin. Well, the strong man would totally be oiled up, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> like he's, um, and the light is right on that bicep, which I just think is great. <laughs> like this is this is his stage well it's oh man look at that and us oh, and see even on a closer view it comes yeah yeah and you've got the the light coming down his like his 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 leotard too right so i mean this this is cool and then you, you think like is this moon thing a lot did they find it and decide to guess Mm. I think the moon thing is most certainly alive, and it is, it it is. Uh, I mean, it's the only thing that's really enjoying itself here. The, <laughs> even the monkey is angry, right? Uh, the uh, strongman a little bit more stoic than the zoomed out view. When it was a zoomed out view, I thought he was like happier. No, he's actually like a lot more stoic than everybody else. So he is very much a, a focal point of fulcrum. And then, uh, but the moon, I mean. Uh, that the cheek muscles, I feel like this is where like the painter really has some agency on how alive this moon is or how much of a prop this is, and maybe that's where a lot of the whimsy comes from because I think that the painter went for a lot more of a this this uh, moon is a character in this in this spread. Yeah, it's, it's part of the the balancing act that they're all doing together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is cool, and it's the only one enjoying itself. <laughs> Dude looks like Tom Hardy. Yeah, a little bit. Oh man, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was a strange one. Let's look at a few more and then we'll be done. Alright. Yeah. Oh, Hawaiian shirt wizard. <laughs> Go back to uh oh, that circus piece is great. That's probably one of my favorites so far. Cause here I see some nice um color contrast and emphasis. Uh real quick. Uh, Frank, this piece in particular commits to the style of a painting versus a realistic depiction, and I adore that. Yeah, they very much lived within the piece. I think like that. That's really what what I think made that circus piece work is they very much lived within that 
that collaborative effort, right? Ooh, dragon. This is nice, man. Look at that water effect. That I a, don't know is that who a made this point? mini or if this is sculpted or this part is in, but if you just look at the com coming up on this triangle and then this triangle here, this is just yeah, we gotta, so pleasing to look at. We've got a... We got the, see, I'm noticing a lot of things do like two... They tend to do two triangles in some sort of configuration against each other. A well, that's why we call the cons the triangle the constructor in geometry. Everything is made out of triangles. Yeah. Yeah, so like the dragon form here is kind of itself a triangle, and then naturally the rock form is, is a triangle, right? Yeah. So we, we have these two... We have these two like sort of shifted triangles. Um, so that's the first thing. This skin is awesome on this. It's fucking dynamite, man. I'm, I'm <laughs> caught up on that, the, the whole composition of the piece and the, I can just, there's so much movement here. The, the person pointing the water splashing and the dragon, I can just imagine his next step and how his legs, go, how his arms going to come up. He's just like creeping and staying low, but ready to fucking pop his wings out at any moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Marek Wolf is, is, is right. This is uh, he, First he says this is what happens when you combine two different scales of miniatures and put them together, the triangles maybe. Um, the second thing is, uh, he can't remember his name, but this man was on Vince's interview with the artist. Yeah, he was on one Saturday there. I, 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 do, I do recall seeing this piece then. Um, Who is this? Uh, Chris Suri. Chris Suri, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get in on this dragon. But, so yeah, let's, let's get in on this dragon, because there's a lot of texture here. Yeah. Um, the skin, first of all, like we actually have a couple different types of skin because we even have like the scales on the shoulder here. But like, man, look at this. I neck. love these scales on the shoulder. Yeah, I love. Them. But look at this. Neck. I love these these wing membranes, use of color, mm -hmm. and then just these. All it is is a dark red line, and then like a line next makes these veinies. Um, then you've got these green splotches here. Mm -hmm. Mm, radical and Man. then yeah these scaly wings like the part that's moving a lot gets cracked uh -huh. and then the neck is more fleshy and less scaly yeah well look at that that um the underbelly was very careful to go to an off-white and not like a white white because you needed that you needed to go closer to white to put the sheen on the on the top of the head right um even the like <laughs> I'm just in love with this sculpt, with the arch of this neck. This is just so beautiful. Well, well like, there's another one of your triangles with the, the lady's arm. To, uh, straight yes. back from that to the neck, uh, then the neck, and then, you know, the empty space becomes the, the third leg of the triangle. So you have another one of these triangles here. But what you'll notice then is because you have this composition here, she kind of blends in a little bit with uh, the the red, the red uh, the, the strip, the stripe on its back. So what it does is it really lets you appreciate her face and mm. her tattoos. And then we got the story of this relationship. This is yeah, pet. she's orange just like it. So that's a really brilliant color choice. There. Yeah, yeah. Look at your not. Yeah, and then your... she's got these blue tattoos of a dragon on her. Yeah. What a fucking story. Yeah, yeah. The 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 drag like the dragon tattoos on her arms. Like she's wearing robes that that sort of. So they stand so close together. Yeah, this is fantastic. Classic stippling combined with layering and glazing. Simple and beautiful. How yep. the edges of the neck and hood being bright and everything around being dark frames her face. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Her, her face is and even. It's so fun to paint this way when you realize you don't up. You can layer up and do lines like this. That's why models with scales and texture like this are so fun. So if we like do a zoom in here on this... This is just little lines. So you just do lines over and over and over again, and you pick the proper colors and put them in the right spot for your volumes. And then, so like these are darker, getting lighter. Because and look, these are lighter, lighter, and then as it dissipates, it gets darker again down mm -hmm. here. And then this is really light. So if you compare this to this bottom one, this is closer to the light up here. Mm -hmm. This is really light, 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 getting darker to getting darker, and then light again because it's the face. Yeah, over here. But then like this, this is easy. You start with this purple, 
orange lines, red lines, little pink lines. And I, I find it interesting because once again we're on the uh, we're on the orange blue. Uh, I mean, orange and blue are the best color complementary combination. Yeah. God, this is this is this is dynamite though. Fucking dynamite, man! You and, and, I, and I noticed this tattoo. I'm like, man. Mm -hmm. You don't notice immediately, mm -hmm. and if you take that out, maybe the whole cohesion of the. If we go back to this one, mm -hmm. like maybe that goes away without this. Without what? Without the blue tattoos. Maybe yeah, that's totally necessary. This tiny, tiny little, uh, subconscious part. Mm -hmm. I think those blue tattoos. The light where it hits the kisses the top of the robe and on the neck of the piece too, like where he's painted that lighter, just helps keep that the, that center area the the two sort of like the triangle of of the two faces plus that that neckline that keeps you in like drawn in. That's like the you're pulled fully in. Okay. Yeah. So if you're painting something like this, you gotta always if something's not working, you can set it aside and. Never try to like make the piece what it doesn't want to. Be. So I was painting some trolls, and I really wanted the trolls to be, and then have these orange flowers on all the bases. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, this is not working. And then the, I just came back and painted the flower. Sudden, it worked. Like never let the piece. It, you're you're like freeing the piece. It it already exists, and you're just getting it there. So you have to listen to it, and you have to look at it and know what it wants. So if you go at that from having this foundation of artist language and practice, you're going to be able to get the piece to be what it wants to be faster and easier that, and you won't get as frustrated because you're able to listen because you have to communicate back with the piece. Yeah. So like maybe before this piece was finished, there's like this blue gla turquoise glaze here. And it's like, Oh man, what's up with the balance here? This wants this here and you have to be able to look and think about what that might look like and the more you think about it the more you look at things and practice looking at things the way we've been doing today the more ideas you're going to be able to. and you only get ideas by practicing mm -hmm. practicing looking and practicing with make your eyes strong and make yeah The uh, one last piece is you're looking for another 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 one of these sculpts to look at. Hell yeah, um, fucking Hellboy. Hellboy. Hell yeah. Um, Hellboy up in there. Uh, but uh, one more thing is uh, he was very careful to not make the base too distracting. The the base was pretty muted uh, for as much detail as it had. Little little boy, you're going to hell. Oh man, Hellboy is sweet. So cool. Oh, so cool. <laughs> look at that light look at that yeah so we'll appreciate moonlight this, from the back. yeah well this this light this backlight this is fucking that's amazing um wow. so here we have this value creating a hard light effect from the front on these and then this moonlight from the back makes him really inhabit the world yeah that's crazy so, and, and if we think about this in terms of, so like he's decided to add this to the background. So this is a hand painted, that's a hand painted 2D in the background. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. So this works with the mini because how, so he's just extending it upwards and really going like a full comic book frame here. Mm -hmm. And so especially from this angle, Thing. Well, you can see that black border he's got on this on this black border on the cell. Essentially, he's yep. framed this and he brings that black border down to the mini's base on both yep. sides, and it makes all, it look like a comic. What it's what it's doing is it makes it look like a, a like a cell in a comic book that then is kind of coming out at us. This is awesome. Like this is cool. I didn't think like. <laughs> uh, and so to paint like this, you have to be super brave because. You have to use dark black, like here and here and here, like this. Where is so here, let's go in here? I can't see your cursor. Um, on his um, on his vest. Okay. Yeah. The sides of the vest, underneath the head, like so. In comic books, traditionally, there's a black line separating colors are meeting. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, black line. But the, like up in here, as this is like, be- this is so cool. Like this is becoming the background. He gets his black line around it. Yeah. So here, um, let's go in and look at like his chest there. Yeah. That's super black. That's super dark. Uh-huh. So he's really managed to seem- seamlessly get that effect. You know, you look at like the gun barrel, mm-hmm. you got that cylinder again. So this is showing all that fucking talk about cylinders is baby nonsense. You need to know your cylinders. Yeah. You use them all the time. Here's your cylinders. There's your white H down the side of the cylinder and then your black line next to it. If you don't know that and you don't practice that, that's just going to hold you back when you're trying, when you get this brilliant idea to do the gun in this certain way. And yeah. then, seamlessly well, melding the 3d and the 2d with that black line well he's got i mean with, with the comic book painting usually it's like you the the sort of babby's first comic book style painting is you go with a like a, a hard edge highlight um yeah that is not what he did here like he got this he got that effect of the the black outline that we always the we love to see the the inking that we love to see in comics he got yes. that effect with these deep recesses of, of going to This work. is totally a pro- I don't know if you've ever done anything with Photoshop and doing like cut and grad techniques with comic painting, but having done that before in art school, mm-hmm. he has totally approached this from the mindset of somebody who flatted everything and then did cut and grad techniques and then put filters over it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he had either done this in the past or had, had like watched videos of people in the industry do that because he had totally nailed just well, how that would look with like, a uh, with a cut and grad technique. I mean, we're on our straight on shot here, right? So like we're on the straight on shot. That background we've got the blue. He that blue moonlight is coming onto that shoulder and his cheek. And uh I mean, that's crazy because, I mean, you're going from the, the two harsh contrasts. I mean, we're ba- again, we're back on our, our, our orange and blue, right? Um, so he's got that, like, that blue shadow butted right up against the red skin without a break. That's fucking ballsy right there. How did he do that? Teach me, teacher. Like, how did he get that to work without it looking bad? <laughs> like... I mean, essentially, you just have to make sure everything... I'm sorry everything what is in the, it is in the exact right spot all the lights and values are in the exact right spot otherwise it looks wrong to your eye yeah yeah because like it, it reads like this is the moonlight and this is how this should look right but like yeah. if you do this i mean because i've messed around with like the the harsh contrast like uh wet blending for instance like i've had usually you have to blend up to like to some neutral color between and then go for the i, I will stop you i wet blending is like okay if you want to work really fast i do not like it because it doesn't allow for control mm, okay. it, unless you're really really good at it but at the end of the day you're, you're like layering is just always going to be more control mm-hmm. and then if you're really really good then you can just use all you want but yeah. i'm not that good mm. i mean but... then you then you're like controlling exactly where the paint lands off the brush if you just layer with thick paint then you can always get it where you want to go be noted, thick paint does not mean a shitload of paint. People do not understand. Thick coat of paint when you is winter time. You wear a thick coat. That does not mean you wear a shitload of thick coats. You wear the appropriate size, medium if you're a medium person, small if you're a small person. You don't wear five triple XL thick coats. That's not what that means. Mm. You put the appropriate amount of paint on. Mm. Thick coat does not mean infinite paint. <laughs> a robust coat. I paint with all thick coats unless I'm adding a little interest. Then use some thin. Mm. But I don't I don't ever glaze up for highlights. It takes too long and I'm not good at it. Uh, as we just got a biddies donation from Brent, 200 biddies. Thank you so much. Listen to the model, be brave, use the artist language, practice, 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 love the Zen. That's it. Thanks, Brent. Um, could you, can we get and that, that back? But like, and also you can hear like, when you come into this, you're like, I'm going to look at this. Meth and I are having a point am I like, oh man, I'll never paint this good. Or like, you can't compare yourself to this Banshee piece. 
would be like the best in the world. Mm -hmm. You've got to find joy in looking at things too. Mm -hmm. No, this isn't, and, this is stunning though. Th this doesn't make me feel bad about myself. This makes me feel inspired. I'm like, yeah, it's very cool. This is so like, this is what you can do with paint. Isn't this, this is like, okay, I'm never going to play basketball like Giannis Antetokounmpo, but like when he slam dunks on some fool, I am like just pumped by knowing that a paragon exists like that. And it makes me beauty, want to aspire beauty. to be, yes, beauty is beauty. And it makes me want to aspire to be great in my way. Right. And com uh, Frank here says comparison is the thief of joy. It's true. Like you're like your, your chess ELO rating should be to guide if you're improving or not. And mm -hmm. if you're only care to care about what that rating, that's it. That's your whole identity. That's not the point point is like hey my rating's going down oh and then it went back up a bit then it went back down and now it's the same time well, well now it's time to practice i often say that uh you know ranks elos um even even uh etc rankings and stuff like that uh they are a measure of progress not skill like yeah it's true it's important to understand that that is a system and systems have their rules and stuff like that but the system isn't indicative of how good you are at anything beyond utilizing the system. Um, you know, progress, uh, the system of progress. So can we get the back shot of him again? I want to look at that co the moon yeah. just one more time. Oh, so Ooh, oh, man. And then from this side. Oh, it's so bright. Oh, it's so good. This and model so is insane. This one again? Yeah. Oh, look at that that's so cool and this leather on the back on the back of his uh top of his trench coat is super comic -y. that's yeah. exactly how it would look that's so good um and you can see again here like that stuff on the side that's not as smooth or detailed as like the chest on the front because he understands the models of Dylan. Mm -hmm. so you're talking about drawing your h right your your capital h on the cylinder right that's what you have to do uh, if you're doing metal, it's always those H's. But yes, uh, in general, a model should be treated as having an I, I guess, on mm -hmm. the the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, right down that line in the middle should be the Go yeah. back to this. Mm -hmm. Like here, the front, that's more smooth and detailed, just like that John Singer Sargent picture. Mm -hmm. Because he knows that's the front of the model. Mm -hmm. So you can draw the eye up to those fucking six pack abs. That fucking and those fucking abs <laughs> we have and found then here on the side like maybe that part on the back on the top of his trench coat is a little less smooth detailed a little more comic a little more abstract but it's like uh, it's that's drawing the eye and that makes the whole composition come together but it makes it work because he's doing this 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 comic cell that's coming out at you i mean look at that cross how like the one side of it is kind of like getting muted and then on the other side we're bright and then, uh, and then by the time you hit the yeah. picture, you have the full muted, just like all lines cross. And then, so what is happening? Like, is this, the tree is like coming out of the 2D? Does it, is this becoming part of that painting at some point? Did or he, is he just, I think is the, that the, 3D tree just with black on it to make it look 2D? I like think, you're going backwards? I you're think, making your 3D look 2D? I think the tree goes backwards into the frame. And I think it's got some glue points here. On the yeah. Tree. I think that that tree, uh, like comes out in three dimensions. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, yeah. I see. Cool. And, but like, but the lean and the and the girth of the tree, is like comes fully forward as we get like the trunk. Then, yeah, and so he used that thick, uh, probably th like screen printing ink or something to really make it look like it's two D. Yeah, and he, he did it to a lesser extent with the cross there. Like you can see, it kind of. I think he. I think he has that cross fixed into at the very top of it, fixed into the the backdrop. Really fun. This is cool. I mean, I, like I feel like this is one of those things where like uh, you know, it totally should win uh, like a golden demon or something like that. Um, but like it wouldn't because the people who judge things like this would it would the 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 fun of the abstract isn't often quantifiable, right? I don't know, man. Here it works so well. It's so and good, it, yeah. But and then uh, there's just these beautiful parallel lines in the composition of the gun, and the mm -hmm. there's so much here that's working together. And then those tentacles, the beastie. one is upward yeah. of the beastie. 
and he goes uh he goes or he goes into like full orange by the time we get to the gauntlet and the and the goop off the mouth is is like full on now we're on full on orange and not just red it's fucking fantastic <laughs> um it's so, one of the coolest things i've looked at in a while yeah same i agree this was this, um, this was a joy. It's it's one fifty three, man. We're yep. gonna let everybody take a break before Oscar is streaming. Yeah, so so Oscar Lars is actually gonna be the next part of your uh, uh got his link here, link there uh, for your Adepticon at home experience. Oscar Lars is gonna be over on YouTube. Uh, he is going to be painting, doing a painting tutor- tutorial uh, with black chaos armor, uh, and that I believe run run time should be about an hour. So he's over on YouTube. Uh, he should be going live uh, in the next five minutes or so. Uh, thank you all for joining uh, joining us, Andrew. Wow, uh, thanks for for teaching me uh, how to hashtag get good at painting. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to do the work though. I just tell you what the ideas are to study. You got to go study them and work with your hands and practice. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, and of course, I've got Andrew's uh, tag there. Uh, in the corner, if you want to follow him on Twitter, it's at Andrew Yells on Twitter. Um, you've been sharing a lot of your models. I think now you're onto the Trogoths. I got some Trogoths. Um, so my strategy with doing these Trogoths this time, I've been looking at a, a lot of Paul Bonner artwork. And he does, uh, so in like Norse mythology, it's like you were a man, then you're a woman, then you're dead, then you're alive, then you're a troll, now you're a mountain, then you were a tree, and now you're a person. So I really wanted the trolls to seem like they were part of the earth. So I had I built the entire display board first mm. with and then made the trolls kind of come out as a, instead of an afterthought. So they're gonna feel like a part of the earth. That's what I'm going for this time. That's metal. All right. Uh yeah, we're gonna let y'all go though. Five minutes now till till Oscar goes live over on YouTube again. Uh, I threw the link up there in chat. Uh, if you're watching this back, uh, all the love. Thank you so much, everybody. Remember, like, subscribe, and follow everybody you need to. And get your Bye, adep- everyone. Bye everybody. <laughs>